Welcome to week number five of the BESL Rocket League tournament. My, as I said, my name's Crapman, joined here by Jar of Jam, and we are ready for some crucial week five action, Jam. Yeah, this one should be a doozy, Crapman, and I'll... Of course, a pleasure to have you here. You've been here during the first week of action. I've heard you absolutely loved it. So, of that course, uh, just 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 to have you here once again, it's it's an absolute pleasure. And we have some great deciders here. Uh, we still have two teams that haven't lost a single game. We have a team that's down on their luck and is looking for the very first win. And we, of course, have uh, Scam and G-Sports going through a little bit of a mini gauntlet with their two games, which can really decide for them uh, how how their season will go from this point on. Yeah, and uh, like you said, we've got one team that way back in week one, and I imagine this has been the case throughout, we I8. Uh, have been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at the stats right now. They've they're three zero up and they've got uh, nine games to their name. Not lost a single game. Same as professional ball chasers. To be honest with you, that's going to be a juicy matchup if they remain like completely undefeated until until they meet in week number seven. But this is week number five, and we I have to get past Spectre right now, um, who are sitting middle of the road at three and two, uh, still in contention for the top four. Uh, placements which will qualify you for the LAN. Um, so how do you see these guys matching up um, today, Jam? Do you, do you think Spectre will give We Are 8 maybe their first loss of the season? Now, every single team that's currently playing against We Are 8 have a big weight on their shoulders, and that is beating what we consider to be the strongest team in the league. And uh, We Are uh, Chewis, Minfipi, and Spring really are the example for the whole league the the other team being the professional ball chaser another team that hasn't lost a single matchup and it will be extremely hard for spectre they have some uh some help along the way uh mishko isn't playing today a chrysic once again steps in and really last week when we say seen chrysic in action he was impeccable really leading his team uh, truth be told though that matchup was against the ram range that only team that hasn't still won a single game but it was a lot of promise shown in that one of the match. And perhaps today, um, Kryzik might continue that rush and help out Spectre RL indeed. At least, at least to, at the very least, to give We at least one blow. We at haven't even lost a single game, let alone a series. They're perfectly zero to nine. No, that's nine to zero. Man, nine that would be <laughs> that, that would be really bad. No, it's zero. Ah, oh, God, I'm still keeping going for it. Basically, they are absolutely unbeaten. So to even take one game off them for Spectre, that would be a grand occasion. For now, I mean, I think we all are on We I hype train, and I'm hoping to see what they can show. Very much so. I'm just looking back at some of the previous uh, score lines. Um, these series have not been close. Like last week, for instance, uh, taking on nine games, they, they won, obviously, in a clean sweep, um, with the last game being six goals to two. So... Uh, not only have they been undefeated, but they have been blowing out their opponents. Let's see if it continues here today uh, against Spectre. And like you said, you, we always get to this point in the in mid season. No matter what esport you follow, if um, if, where if you follow the RLCS, this happens a lot as well. You get to that point, middle of the season, where there's one team pretty much dominating against the rest of the league, and there's just that one team. There's that one team who trips them up usually in one of these middle weeks and we are in one of the middle weeks week number five with only two weeks to go uh after that until we find out our four land teams um so it's going to be interesting to see um if spectre have the uh the spoiler factor of the perfect season of we i8 but of course we've seen what this team are capable of they uh are unrelenting to say the least and um i think we're all predicting a 3-0 sweep a 3-0 clean sweep um but again, you never know. Spectre could show up today. Well, for Spectre, they really should be relying on a couple of their players. Of course, again, I will mention Kryzik. Uh, the stat line for Kryzik is pretty, uh, perhaps inflated, since Kryzik only played once, but have already shown a pretty strong game. Uh, but if we just compare, take two of the players on both of the sides, uh, on the side of Spectre, Primea. With a crazy 54 shots taken, that's the best result in the league so far. The Spectre RL can be really looking forward to a hit we had with a barrage of shots. The only problem for that being, though, despite that huge amount of shot that Primea has been taken, 
only 25, 22% of them end up as goals. That's one of the lowest, that's second to last worst shooting percentage in the league, actually. On the other end, though, it's, man, every single player on WI, it seemingly is uh, <laughs> an example to the rest of the league. Chuvas, number, uh, number one in goals and a third in shooting percentage. Sporting very respectable 17 goals in nine games and ahead by nearest competitors by three goals in three games. That's how far we are ahead of the curve to is. That is that is absolutely ridiculous. And it just uh, like you said, everyone on uh, the WI8 team are just a walking highlight reel. Um, it is just ridiculous the the uh, the pressure they're able to put up in the uh, the games, the goals that they're able to score. And me and I really commented about this at the uh, at the start of the season in week number one. These guys didn't want to be competitive. They didn't even try and qualify for the rival series. And we thought, why on earth did they not try and qualify? Because they're tearing up this league. Yeah, throughout the weeks, as we've been seeing, seeing we ate, uh, we really had the the same impression of them. Me, myself, and our league were looking and thinking, man. Those are some great players. Why, oh, why? I, th I think we've been slowly con convincing them. Our combined effort of you, me, and our league just made them think, man, it's, it's, uh, maybe next time, maybe next time. Man, that's a good plan. Uh, maybe for Dreamhack. Hey, uh, next Dreamhack's happening in Valencia. So that's not a really far way to go. So they might as well, they might as well go and grab it. So, Craftman, I mean, why not start? I think both teams are extremely ready to get on with it. And I'm pretty sure you want to see the We Eyed Boys yet again, the Lithuanian powerhouse plus Spring from Estonia. Let's see how Chuos, Mimfify, and Spring will show up against Chrysic, Primi, and Sami. And you, I believe, my good man, are muted. You're muted, are muted, is muted. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry. I was trying to sort my issues, but Chuvis open up the scoring six seconds in. What a fantastic dribble play in Memphipi there to end it and get the first goal on the board. Almost looks too easy for Weite. They walked that ball in and they hit Spectre before they even realized what's happening, that the match has already started. You can't snooze against someone like Weite and Spectre gets punished pretty early. So really nothing has happened just yet. It's just that almost like Weite start with a one goal advantage, as if the games against them were unfair, not unfair already. Yeah, definitely. And getting that first goal going to cement at least their stamp on this matchup as we continue in the first 30 seconds. Another chance for We I8 to go 2 0 up, but they keep the pressure on. And now Spring looks to take this one into the corner. He does so, gets it out towards Chuvis. High in the air, he has enough boost to get this over. Som Somic just able to fake him out a little bit. Thought that one was going to go long, but stays down here in the side of Spectre. And now Chuvis, these rotations from We I8 are so good every time a, there's a clear coming down from Spectre into the orange half, there's always someone from WeI8 there to stop it. Yeah, it really helps the fact that WeI8 are constantly in motion while Spectre, a couple of times I've already seen them just gather in a bunch and wait for their opponents to come at them. Uh, against a team oh, like nice. WeI8, it's a pretty dangerous affair. Great great passing play in between WeI8. They could have moved the ball quickly enough, but Chuas, that third player coming in and just stops the ball dead allowing the rest of we eight players to come back to their own net, replenish, unboost, and continue the attack. Oh, that's just a net wide open. Spectre, just look away for one second. We're already in their face. Yeah, you can't let these open nets happen against we eight too often. And maybe this, maybe it's the first of many, but just Spectre getting caught up in their own rotation and allowing that open net to go straight through. And Memphipi will get his second on the board. And Right off the kickoff once again, it is We I8, and this time Chuvis taking full control of this. Off the roof he goes, looking to dribble it, looking for the double touch. Primea just gets it to the side before any more damage can be done. And now Memphipi up on that backboard, looking for his team's spring there, keeping the pressure down. But again, it's We I8 just not letting Spectre get anywhere near this ball. They're just playing keep away for, for the most part, and Really just rotating out very, very well. Oh, what a touch from Christic. That was unexpected, but great save from Spring. First real opportunity for Spectre. 
I'm loving these passes to the other side of the field. And the fact that Kryzik basically set up camp on the other side of the field while he was waiting for that pass added even more to that passing play by Spectre. If they can pull off something like that a little bit more often on Weite, they might start uh, asking some questions. For example, whether should we be a little bit more passive? And for Weite, really, so far the name of the game has been aggression and pressure, but Spectre definitely can hit their opponents in the counterattack. You can see as well, whenever a shot comes in on, this, on the blue Spectre net, there's always seemed to be a bit of a miscommunication. There's a couple of double commits. That's going to be wide open for Memphipi, though. Great, great defending, though, from the blue Spectre player. And this isn't as much of a blowout as we expect to see from Wii It's still fairly low scoring from them. Maybe I have seen in the past that does take them Maybe a couple of games to get into their stride and then they'll start to blow out their opponents once they get the feel of them. But here comes Spectre. They've got to get these chances as often as they possibly can because Spectre, uh, sorry, we are eight. I'm not going to give them an inch. And like, like just there, 10 seconds that I spent roughly in the orange half of the field and it's right back to the blue. Yeah, it is. We eight while they're not completely steamrolling Spectre right now. It is, in fact, just the first game. Dangerous opportunity right there for Spectre. Another counterattack. But right now, really, all they oh, need to do is just oh. see that game out. Minfip, I can't reach the pass counterattacking opportunity. But all of the Spectre is bunched up and bunched up on the other side of the field. Getting their chances, trying to kill the ball. But look at that. We are already thinking about the attack. Oh, great save. Clutch. Great save from Kryzik there. And we talked about that dribble play. Oh, no. Somic put it towards his own net. Primera has to make a clutch save. That dribble play from Spring a little bit earlier on, he had Memphipi to his left, does hit him, but just a little bit of a mistiming there. Still in the lead, two goals to nil, 35 seconds remaining. Inspector just need to get, maybe just get one goal here in game number one, and it might send a message to Wii I8 saying we're here to play. In reality, this game, you could, only, you could really look at it as like one nil, because that first goal happened so, so quickly. And we, I, excuse me, we, I have just ran with it the entire time. And the goal hasn't been scored really since the first minute. Yeah, this has been a slow game, surprisingly so. But really, if you look at the stat line right now for specifically Fuet, you could see where the control of this game lies, and it lies squarely in the hands of Wii. Uh, I believe that ended up as three, two, and four uh, shots for Wii in total. So nine, if my caster math. Yeah, it's a little bit better than the desk math. <laughs> or was that the desk math? S someone priest. It could have been uh, oh. nobody's in content. Uh, no, knowing the... our history jam, our caster math isn't that great. So. Yes, really. I'm, I'm dropping shades while I have some skeletons <laughs> in my closet. Yes, yeah. uh, forgive me. I am, I, I've been too, a little bit too hasty. But this has been Weide's game. Not fully dominant, yet still you could see that they have quality to really keep Spectre at bay. And they have quality to close down the game. For Spectre, they'll have to go from this to using every single chance that we are giving them and using them to the fullest. Unless they really take every single chance that we are giving them, it might be a true downhill and winnable battle for Spectre. And yeah, and Spectre, I think they need to sort of, they need to somehow disrupt the We I rotations because they are rotating very, very cleanly. And I mentioned that. Uh, being when Spectre are trying to clear the ball out of their own half, there's always someone on the go on the midfield line from Wii I to keep that one down in the blue half of the field, and it's just giving them more and more chances. Uh, and I think, like you said, there was only three or four shots from Spectre in that entire match, and uh, that was not <laughs> combined. Could not beat Wii I on one person, one person from Wii I. I think they at least had three or four shots each. Um, but let's see if they can get things rolling here in game at number two. Good pressure early, taking control of this off the kickoff. Primia going for a shot, but just going to get touched away by Krismic. And now Spring there on is going to be getting that one back into the blue half of the field. And very back and forth early on in this game. And not seen I take control the way they've kind of wanted to. Spectre are actually giving them some questions to answer in the one half of the field. Well, yeah, this game... Now now I'm getting surprised, oh, honestly. Touch. Now I'm seeing that uh, the Weite are 
not willing to go as hard, perhaps. They know that at some point they will have to start respecting their opponents. And really, for Spectre, they have a pretty respectable result so far. They are fourth in a league with a 3-2 to two, uh, result so far. And so, really, why not play a little bit more of a conservative playstyle while still getting a chance to get something done? Right now, it's almost as if there's a little bit of a drought after game number one that didn't fully go their way. Here, they're feeling as if they're perhaps doubting themselves. Oh, oh that's oh. just an opener for Primea. Top shooter for Spectre, top shooter for the whole league. Just opens up a big all gap spring so slow on his challenge. And neither Chuas nor Minfipai can really follow up the play from that point on. Yeah, very well challenged by Primea there. Getting the dunk over his opponents and then just taking it in himself. One gold to nil in favor of Spectre now. And they really have been... The ones to watch here, one sh only one shot has been taken, and it was that one from Primea, or could get a second here, but Springo able to take that one to the side. But it seems Spectre have settled down into this match, and they have started rotating well. A couple of bump plays as well from Somic. Oh, brilliant upfield pass to Chuvis. Couldn't send it home as Kryzik rotates in. Very, very, very well defended by Spectre back on the rotation. We eight are a snake lying in the grass. You can see, you can't see it, or even when you can't see it, it looks so calm. Like at no point you think that there will be suddenly a spring and a jump into action. But here, we eight for a moment looks stationary. Oh, here what a though, save. bringing two attacks in. Now, Primea being the savior for the Spectre side. But where's the attack? Where's the follow? We eight have two players sitting on the midfield line. Neither of them are really risking it and right now we had a thing in the in the full power to really continue those attack but but not but not putting enough players up front going for those perhaps individual oh. plays <laughs> spring being the train that just barrels on through we had finally get themselves a tight game i think they've almost missed a couple of chances previously yeah where there's your uh offensive play there jam right from spring playing dribbling out and then playing the main games with the keeper Able to tie this game back up at one apiece. That's going to be a wide open net. Memphipi's going to have all the time in the world, but Primea very well read by him. And he gets the touch to the side. But here comes We Are Out. They're starting to take control now in this blue half of the pitch. Chuvis trying to touch it over the keeper of Primea, who takes it to the side. Now Kreisic dribbling up the side. He's going to have to hit that one out to Somic. That's Primea come in. It's very well communicated by... Spectre here as well. Great passing play though, up to Spring, who's not able to shoot on target, but does get to the side. Keeps that pressure on. Shot from Mfippi, going to be saved by Somic. And once again, we are starting to rotate well, and they're kind of just being shocked in the first half of this game, and they've started to come to life. Spring looking for another bit of a dribble, but he's going to leave it from Mfippi. He's got all the boost in the world. Doesn't it? Was it? Wasn't? It, going to follow that one up. Bit of a weird decision if you ask me, but it looks like it's worked out all right as Spring takes a shot. Kryzik just takes it to the side. Very well defended in a time of desperation, you would say, from Wii as they're trying everything they possibly can. Ooh, and Samic keeps on going for the backboard clear and keeps on missing that backboard clear. This is not the first time that off his play, his team is forced to really throw players in front of the net, barely managing the saves. Perhaps a little bit of a change of strategy is in force for Spectre. Although, you need to Ooh. go for these. Especially when we I can pull off something like that. Again, you you don't expect them. Their play is so uh, slow, so... It, it's, it's consistent, it's uh, efficient, but it's not flashy. But we I know exactly how to get the job done. And with that perfect play, it's just fantastic. Yeah, I mean, I said they tried everything in the book to try and get past the defense of Spectre. We haven't seen that yet. Great touchdown from Mfepi. As he takes the lead back for We Are 8 in this final minute now. 40 seconds on the clock. And Spectre need to try everything they possibly can. They were in control of this game for so long. And they've just let their guard down a little bit and let We Are 8 back into here, into this game number two. They need to get something going now. That's a wide open net, actually. Chrisman is going to fire on it. Spring very well rotated and gets the save away, but the follow-up from Primea. Oh, just 
down, and Kreisic couldn't get it in the net either. Oh, that might be the last dash attempt here in game number two from Spectre. They're going to have five seconds left on the clock here. One more pass in the middle down to Somic. That's going to be a big clear down from Spring. It might actually go into the net. It does. A big clear from Spring, and it confirms the game number two victory here for a wee aye aye. We went for home for we eyes as spring finished it up. Man, it I still don't know what exactly is happening to we eyes. It's a completely different team that I'm seeing in terms of playstyle, the the strategy that they take in, uh, in approach to this game. They're I mentioned that once, I'll say it again conservative. They are not taking any risks. They're not going complete. Well, they've, even previously, they weren't doing mindlessly, but they were going aggressively. And that aggression was just really getting them, uh, helping them against all of their teams that have been playing so far. Here, though, they've really switched it up, but they're still capable of pulling up a magnificent play just if, if, if they really want to. So now Spectre tried. It was a close game, closer than the first game, that's for sure. But they still couldn't make that finish, and they couldn't hold on to their lead. And we guys were just increasing, increasing, increasing their pressure, and finally getting up three-one in the end. Uh, crap, man! And your microphone is muted. Yes, so, sorry, I've been, I've been, I've been letting my guard down uh, <laughs> uh, this afternoon. It's not, it's not going well. We, we do our best, though. We do our best here at BSL. Um, but we talked about the shot count. Um, from game number one with Spectre only getting up a few shots um, really underperforming from Wii I 8 but they only trailed by one shot there. It just shows you the change in style, the change in rotation and uh, how they're playing a lot more higher line and trying to put a lot more pressure onto the Wii I 8 net. It just shows you the um, uh, so, sorry, it, it just shows you the uh, difference that that makes in shot count, in pressure and like we said, that was a way closer game. But within the first five seconds, Spring just completely baffles the defense here. Well done from Chuvis. What a pass. And Spring to send it home. Spring showing the, really, division on the field and the positioning as well. He knew exactly where he needed to be. Chuvis just beating everyone on the flank. Spectre expecting something to happen. But that quick throw to the center from Chu is beating the rest of the defense of Spectre completely out. And man, we we're getting another quick one for Wea, just like in game number one. Maybe this is where they finally come in live. Or perhaps this is where Spectre's defensive machine will finally come into action. They need players like Samik, who is currently pretty close to the rest of the league leaders in assists per game. So far, it hasn't really been showing. 40 seconds into this one. And there was a good chance from Primera and Sonic earlier. It just was saved the way. But again, it's, despite this early goal from Wii II, it is really back and forth at the moment. They're trying everything they possibly can, are we II, but the defense from Spectre has just been really well played so far. They're not giving them an inch. There's a pass out. Oh, Oh my goodness, I thought that was going to be a miscommunication and Krismic was going to take that shot. Watch here, as Memphipi puts oh. it upfield, Somic was going to follow it. <laughs> but then Crimea had a shot, it just goes to the to the, to the side and Somic falls into it. What a, what a mad play. Honestly, this is the craziest, the craziest... Uh... Just sequence of events I've ever seen that led to a goal, own goal or a goal on the other side of the field. Everything fell in the right place. <laughs> Man, and it took so, so many pieces as well. This is a real life Rube Goldberg oh, machine. Isaac. Isaac, putting Spectre up by one. That's two goals. The most Spectre have scored so far. What an individual play by him. Minfipa and Spring both grounded. Minfipa, well, Spring was out of boost. Minfipa was sitting on something. I'm actually somewhat surprised that he didn't rise for the challenge in the air. And Spectre just do a one-two quick punch. That is nuts from Kryzik. What a what a play. He has to been denied the goal that he was looking for. First of all, taken away by Somic. He does a big solo play himself. And puts We I or excuse me, puts Spectre back in lead. I'm too used to saying We I are in the lead. 
It's Spectre now with the advantage here in game number three. Could they deal We Are 8 their first loss of the season? Not going to be that easy as they leave the net wide open once again. And Spring taps it in. It, it doesn't help the, the fact that Spectre have put all of their players on the wall. Really in that situation, the moment you're beat, majority of the players get completely cut off of the play. We eyed position all their players, majority of the players on the ground, are waiting for a challenge to happen on the wall. And as a result, you could see how the positioning really won we eyed that, uh, that attack. Just they had players in all the right places. And Kryzik looking for another soul play. He's only got one man to beat. Flips oh. it over him and Fepe. Oh, Somic was there. Oh, he gets bashed by his own teammate. Not able to follow that one up. What a crucial play there. That could have gone Spectre's way, but it lets We I go into this counter-attacking play. At net's wide open. Chuva is able to shoot. No, he's not. Couldn't get the touch off the backboard. And it allows now Spectre to rotate and defend a little bit better. But oh my goodness, that's going to be a wide open net. Oh, Primea just gets to save right at the last second. And it was a double commit actually from Wii 8 Going to let the counter attack come in now from, uh, excuse me, from Spectre. Two minutes to go and we're still tied at two goals apiece. This is seriously anyone's game, but Primea is going to take the lead. It's the aggression for Spectre that really is working out for them. They have recognized that we eight with their passive playstyle, very careful one, really, they can be at the same pace as we eight all of a sudden. With the exception of the moments that we eight all, all of a sudden spring like a jack out of the box, we eight can be beat even in their own half. Something unthinkable and previously unheard of, really, Craftman. But here, Spectre are bringing the game to the toughest of the opponents in the league. Oof, could be enough. Just so many times they have been leaving that ball in front of the net for Spectre to take. We either are just dangling those great prizes and Spectre are constantly trying to get them. Now, we see Spectre with the advantage. Somic almost making it 4-2. Oh, that's a wide open net. Too high a line from We I 8 And they let that one sneak in. And my oh my jam, it looks like... Somic and the rest of Spectre might deal the first loss to Wii 8 this season. Holy moly. Well, Craftman, I'm pleasure to have you here for this one, since this is a history <laughs> yeah. in the making. We were thinking which will be the first team that will drop, but there's still a minute and 20 seconds remaining. But we eight with their series of misses, with Spectre constantly being in the right places. Really, this is the best they have um, looked so far ever since they've got uh, gotten through their own little gauntlet by winning two of the games in week number three, I believe it was. But uh, that's just one game. That's only one game. I want to see whether Spectre can keep up this same game, uh, whether we eight, perhaps they were just sort of half asleep. And now this will be the kick that they needed to really put it into gear and put it into rev. But for I mean, now, only... Spectre just getting all that pressure work to them. Yeah, and you got to remember, Jam, it is only two goals still. 40 seconds remaining. Still plenty of time for We Are If they go back to their really aggressive play style that we've seen so far. And Spring getting demoed for his efforts. But going to drop down to the tube is great defending, though, from Spectre. Going to clear that one away. And now Spectre look like they are just going to park the bus. Chuvis, oh my goodness, the double tap. It just goes to the side. That was their chance to maybe get a goal off kickoff. But now with 10 seconds left, it looks unlikely that they're going to get the two goals that they need to force this overtime. And for the first time in this BSL Season 1, we I8 drop their only game of the season so far. And Spectre... Bring the series back to two games to one. Blow has been dealt. And it has been through the combined effort of whole of the Specker team. I feel like every single player has contributed in one way or the other. Kryzik, once again, the number one sub really seems like in the league right now. Premier and Samik obviously catching up as well. It's lovely. It's, it's absolutely lovely when I'm currently seeing for Spectre. For Riyadh, I'm confused. Perhaps we either themselves are confused because their play are is not reminiscent of the complete and utter control of the game that had previously. This is the team that has scorelines like eight to two or eight mm. to one, something absolutely out of this world. 
This this week though, they are feeling weak. And while they still have the quality, you can see that in individual plays. You can see that in a passing plays that sometimes spring out uh, when the, their opponents least expect it. So many times we I in game number three have been giving freebies for Spectre. It's not even funny. And Spectre, I said they needed to use every single chance that their opponents would be giving to them with the amount of the opportunities we had have been given them and Spectre really stepping up. This is the result 4-2 and Spectre deal the first loss to Weite. Again, only one game crafter, but it's it's getting interesting over here. It is getting very interesting. Just shout out to Kryzik, first of all, as well. He's really been leading Spectre throughout this uh, series and especially through that last game. He had a couple of great opportunities and he's really been leading them as Chuvis going for the flip reset. Not going to pull it off. He didn't have enough momentum behind him and everyone from Spectre in goal to race to wherever that one may go. Chu is looking for double touches. He's looking for all these fancy plays, whereas he could just be going for the simple give and go one, two pass. It looks like Chu is trying to do a lot himself and he's not bringing his team into it, or, or at least he's not giving an opportunity to give his team a chance. He's too, trying to go too fancy too early. Save, save it from when you're a couple of goals up, mate. That's my advice. But that one's actually going to be left for Prime Mia. Oh, my goodness. Chuvis doesn't leave that those loose balls too often, but that was a dangerous one. Very well recovered. Man, once again, it's it's a changeup. It's Spectre in control. And I think you're right, Crafters. It's the fact that we Weite are... Scoring first yet again, it seems. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is... Well, I, I was going to say that we are looking like, uh, not as a team, but perhaps more like an individual individual unit. Three players trying to pull the blankets in their own direction and in the end, really breaking out the whole stride of the team. The goal that they scored, though, will put them in the lead this time, but yeah, I don't think that will be that big of a oh. challenge. Okay, two goals, that might be a problem. Two goals. Yeah, Spectre have started the previous game with, with conceding the goal pretty early, if if my memory serves me right. Here, though, we might quickly strike on Spectre since they were still recovering from a previous attack. And that is a good situation to put themselves into. Yeah, and that's kind of what they wanted at the start of this game. Two fairly quick goals to give themselves the leads. Remember, they only need to win this next one, or one more game, rather. To take the series. Oh, what a shot from Mfippi from the side. Chuvis can't follow up, but even better save from Kreismik. My goodness. They are trying everything they possibly can. Three goals, impossible. But the man of the moment, I, I can't, I can't, I can't sing enough praises for the sub coming in and really carrying the Spectre team forward. Indeed, now Somic, still three minutes left on the board. Got plenty of time, but passed out to Memphipi from Spring doesn't connect into the net. Good pass now to Spring himself, as Krismic does get that final clear away and it will put the pressure on Chuvis trying to dribble it out of his own side of the field actually gets Somic to jump which allows now Memphipi to work his magic but that's going to be cleared oh Spring did not want to touch that on the backboard he's going to leave it for a Primea oh that is a big mistake from Spring has to he try to clear off the backboard here he just clobbers it against the backboard and leaves it for Primea straight down and it's suddenly a one goal game jam there could have been so many places he could have placed that ball, but killing it against the backboard and dropping it straight for oncoming Spectre players, I will chug that as the worst possible place ever. And obviously the the rest of the Wii players weren't expecting that. You don't expect your teammate to missing up that badly that you need to go up the up them uh, yourself. And really the reaction there, I, I can only feel sorry for white players since it's almost impossible to react to Spectre, though. Just feeling that there might be something, and really, one out of ten times, something like that happens. No, it's a double commit, and the defense of Spectre are just going to allow Wii to keep this pressure on at 50 now. 
Memphipi takes a shot, just a pot shot. Two men in net, not able to react in time, and Memphipi puts them back up by two. Well, that's back into a good, solid lead. And those are the passing and aerial plays that we had shown us throughout the season and something that you really need to take out and show in full force if they really want to get away from Spectre as fast as possible. You know, because with that game number three, which they lost, it really shows that Spectre can use the opportunities given to them. Right now, it had, there have been that many, but we are, are still in a danger zone, especially since still there's plenty of time to get two goals back. Indeed, and now Crash the Consomic, no. The gratitude of the situation. Oh, Primea sneaks one in the right hand cross, or the right hand post. And they know the size of the task in front of them. And what a pass down. Somic and Kryzik were double committing on the left-hand wall, but great positioning from Primea puts them back within one. And a minute 20 left on the clock. Oh, could get one off a kickoff. Somic looking to turn that one in. Just gets a soft touch to the side, rather. Oh, now Memphipi going to go for the, the counter on that. Trying to do exactly what Somic was doing. Has to get saved that time. But you just feel Spectre have one more trick up their sleeve. And when the, in this last 60 seconds to go here in game number four, it is all to play for still. Uh, Spectre looking to deal the first, the second game loss. Maybe wow. take up to game number five. Sure, Craftman, but really, the attack from Spectre just went like a uh, hot knife through butter. We eyed all of a sudden missing every single challenge. And quick passing play of Spectre led them straight in front of the net and almost gave him a chance. Chuvas, despite his still the amount of goals that he continues scoring, is not looking that confident in the defense. And some of his plays have given Spectre those opportunities. But man, that could have been golden for Spectre. Now they need to use the last 15 seconds to tie out this game number four. 10 seconds now, Chuvis. Oh, he dunks it under the crossbar. And despite one game lost to them in their name, and me criticizing Chuvis quite a lot before this game starting, Chuvis is going to be one to put the dagger in the series. And from all of Spectre's well, and really, they have played really, really well throughout this entire series. It's just not enough to get past the powerhouse and BASL right now that is we are a spring looking for a, a final dribble air dribble goal but it might not fall here this ball will still remain in the air until it touches the ground and game will be over officially there it is we are taking game number four four goals to two and they take the series three games to one but my oh my jam they're no longer te technically they are undefeated but Again, they've dropped one game now. Haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I don't think by the end of the season that will be quite a big of a difference. Uh, yes, professional ball chasers are still undefeated, not only in series but in games as well. We expect both uh, the ball chasers and we eyed, excuse me, to end up the season uh, at the very top of the table anyway. Mm -hmm. Really, the only thing that will matter is the seeding. First place or second place. The, the rest of the prize pool will be decided at LAN uh, at the beginning of June over at uh, Kipsala uh, Exposition Center during the Hypertown Riga event. So really, it's um, it, it's not completely not the end of the world. Now, if they would have lost, man, that would have given a lot of change to, to the board. Starting from the fact that Spectre will be 4-2 in, in the league, and I would put them squarely at the very uh, in the top four, which is the top four golden spots that earn the golden tickets to the LAN. Here, though, they'll have to end up with a 3-3 and look to their final matchup since that that, that was oh, that's almost everything. They will be playing against Mind Game Seasports during week number six, and uh, after that, their season will be over. They'll be looking for the rest of the teams to see how they play out through. Oh, man. Uh, thankfully, <laughs> perhaps even, we I don't have to play any more games today. Because yeah. the yeah. league leader was looking shaky. They, they were looking a little bit shaky. And hopefully they can sort that for next week. Where they will be taking on post-game strong. Who we are actually going to be seeing in our next matchup. Taking on Ram Ranch. Now this is a, a bottom of the table um, matchup. 
Uh, Ram Ranch still to win a single series and post game strong, only uh, able to take one victory so far. And that was against Mind Games, who are the only other team, um, who, who are actually the team sandwiched between um, <laughs> post game strong and Ram Ranch in seventh spot, post game strong in sixth position right now um so this is going to be an interesting one uh actually we'll get on to that in a second we'll just mention we i first of all um because we can't get can got start, started talking about that and they've got three games left one next week against post game strong and then the week after is the one that everyone wants to be here for i urge you to be here two weeks from now they are going to be taking on professional ball chasers and who knows, both these teams could still be undefeated and that will be for the number one seed. Yeah, that's why we were all expecting that matchup. Um, here, we, we could have almost lost that matchup since we had had a risk of actually losing, but no, no, it's still going. There's still a couple of chances here and there that it might happen. Of course, we are playing next week. That's against Post Game Strong. Uh, Personal Ball Chaser is playing against Ram Ranch. Well, we'll see about that. And of course, professional ball chasers are playing today later on um, against yeah, these Kamen G Sports in one of their two of today's matches. But yep, let's indeed get back to the Ram Ranch matchup versus the post game strong Ram Ranch still at the bottom of the table with a 0 4 result. Mathematically, they are out of the contention for LAN unless really something crazy happens. Uh, first of all, they need to win the reigning three games with their 0 4 uh, score so far. I'd say that's yeah. a little bit of the realm of fantasy or sci-fi. Yeah, um, I, I don't think they're mathematically eliminated. It's just out with the, out with the realm of possibility, you would say. Because well, like it, it, to... it somehow will have to be that they win the remaining uh, the remaining matches, and then Probably many teams go three well. and four. Yeah, but basically, it, it's possible. their fate is out of their hands, and they need to do all they can to get to land. Um, looking very unlikely and like you said if they if they lose this game uh right now against post game strong they are pretty much out of it uh and will have to sit at home uh watching the land from the comfort of their own city um but post game strong despite still only have winning one game uh so far against many games esports they're still mathematically in it only one in three if they win out uh their remaining three games there will be four and three uh, and they will be in the mix for top four. So very crucial uh, matchup in their post game strong, one that they definitely need to win. Well, unfortunately for post game strong, ever since week number two, they haven't been able to recreate their magical playstyle. Really, in that series, m everyone's jaws dropped. We all so all of a sudden we saw post game strong. We perhaps underestimated. Where did all of these passing plays come from? They looked so strong. Uh, conjuring up chances in the opponent's third, the final third, that is. But not since then. Uh, yes, they had a couple of tough matchups against Spectre, who are really on form against professional ball chasers. Well, of course, just something through their opposition as well, really fighting we in instead department. Here, it might be their chance. The problem, though, is Ram Ranch last week actually looked pretty good. Yes, they lost their game uh, against Spectre. But this was the first week when I could honestly say, hey, Ram Ranch are looking pretty good. They're looking like they're not lost on the field. Unfortunately, today, Akfus is once again out. Irik will be subbing in. Uh, Irik, actually, you might have seen uh, during week number two, substituting for Prime on the Spectre, RL side. Uh, but now with Grumpy, Refke, and Iri, Ram Ranch, I feel like, still has a possibility to uh, continue on fighting. Right now, really, its chances are pretty low, but at the very least, they could be the uh, the team that perhaps knocks other teams down a peg, being a sort of a gatekeeper that doesn't allow someone to go into the uh, into the uh, into land finals. Things can still happen. So yeah, this this is this is I believe is still uh, the matchup that the community have picked as the match of the week. Actually, no, it has changed. Since then, it has changed. A lot of votes went for Ram Ranch versus Post Game Strong. Uh, but our match of the week will, um, of course, will be later. Scam G Sports versus the Backflip Boys. First of all, let's indeed... Uh, Craftman, what are your expectations for this match? Do you think the Ram Ranch, the improved, I would argue, Ram Ranch can finally take it? Or is the Post Game Strong finally going to get one back and get their second win of the season? I'm going to say that Ram Ranch... Um... 
like you said, they've not got a lot to play for. They are mathematically still in contention for LAN. Uh, but like you said, it's going to be really, really tough. But I see them as playing spoiler a little bit. I imagine they want to uh, they, they want to play spoiler as much as they can, go in against their uh, last three opponents being uh, professional ball chasers, we I, I, they've still got to play them in the next two weeks. Uh, and of course, today post-game strong. They could ruin post-game strong season. This is probably the biggest matchup they're facing, and they could potentially not post-game strong out of land contention. Um, so it's going to be interesting, and of course, playing with that sub uh, for Ram Ranch, it's going to throw them off a little bit. But but again, they've still not won a single series. They've only won one game, and that was way back in week number one against uh, uh, excuse me against main games. So let's just see if they can play spoiler, and away we go here on DFH Stadium. Ram Ranch in the blue, post game strong in the orange. And it's early pressure now from post game strong looking to get out to a very quick start because they're probably coming into this expecting to breeze past Ram Ranch. I imagine Ram Ranch wants to give as much bother to them in this match up as they possibly can yeah previously for ram range the biggest problem was nobody knew what they were doing and um, i'm feeling oh. a little bit harsh saying that but really the, the the aggression just wasn't there they almost didn't want to approach the ball at times unfortunately the game doesn't start that well for them a uh, couple of misses coupled with the fact that the post game strong is currently really we're feeling like they could see ram range in those opening 30 seconds they can find themselves the opening goal as well they do indeed, and that was just a big mistake in the defense from Ram Ranch. Just no one there to take care of it. And no pressure really being taken by Ram Ranch onto the orange side of the field just yet. They're kind of just playing a little bit too passive for my liking. And a big miss from there, actually faking out Rukawa. Going to have to call in his teammate Arceus. We'll put the ball back down and we're going to play a little bit of ping pong here after the first minute has ticked by and now first opportunity really for Ram Ranch now is Grumpy trying to get into the middle of the field. We're going to leave it for Nihilus Penguin as Rakua. Double commit there for Ire Irefka and Grumpy but it won't matter as Nihilus Penguin rotating well making up for his teammates mistakes. Oof, and really you could see post-game strong, especially Arceus completely abandoning the play, considering that Rukava and Dipsy would be able to get to the ball, not taking the risk into the account, and Irie, or Nihilus Penguin, as Irie is currently named in the game, gets uh, Ram Ranch a tying goal after just being really aimed on the attack, putting the players up front and getting every single challenge in their favor. Post-game strong relaxed just for a second, but Ram Ranch knew exactly where to hit him. Oh, Arceus knowing exactly where to hit himself, right over the top of the defense. Great pass in here from uh, Dips Dipsy, from Dipsy, sorry. Yeah, it's Dipsy LV, because uh, it's Latvia. Uh, but over the top he goes, brilliant arcing ball down, and sneaks it under the crossbar way too high. That defense was playing from Ram Ranch. I really uh, loved calling uh, Dipsy LV, Dipsy Love. And Dipsy apparently love, the, yeah, was a... <laughs> the, the chat was giving him a lot of flack for that. But hey, I I don't mind. <laughs> I, again, it's 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 not it's not me, I suppose, so I can't exactly speak for Dipsy. <laughs> but just just a just a little bit of silliness here and there, though you can see Irie. The Irie definitely is not uh thinking any silly thoughts right down the field. Being a sub for Ram Range Squad, a team that really needs to fight tooth and nail for their survival in the league, or at the very least just an ability to go to land. Irie wants to show the world that they indeed can just be the best sub ever there is. Even perhaps beating Krysik, who really has been almost impeccable for Spectre in first series. Yeah, one thing I'm noticing as well from uh, from Ari, uh, Nihilus Penguin. We'll refer, refer to him as Nihilus Penguin for, for <laughs> ease of viewer, viewership. Um, Nihilus Penguin, a lot of the time, is rotating out and letting Refke and Grumpy just play their own game. They are double committing a lot, but Nihilus Penguin is sitting there not really rushing in too much, and it is playing a little bit more of a conservative game. There, another miscommunication from Ref K and Grumpy as they double commit and let post-game strong 
just bring this ball back into the blue half of the field. So they need to clean up that communication, but it's well done from Nihilus Penguin. Not making a triple commit, and what a pass from Refke. An even better touch from Nihilus Penguin, tying this bun back up. I, th I think this is the perfect way to slot yourself into the team, knowing that most likely Remrange didn't have enough time to really gel together with Nihilus Penguin. Have playing as a sort of a support, uh, being the third player that reacts to everything that the rest of the teammates are doing, is is a perfect setup right now, especially since post game strong, perhaps not expecting such an explosive playstyle from Nihilus Dieter. As Ramran to get themselves a second on the board, and man, that that passing play was mm. su supreme. I would even say post game strong found themselves napping on the ground. Yeah, well, uh, post game strong trying to pass the play of their own in the corner there, but I think they were trying to pass and play for the sake of a passing play. Probably wasn't the best option to choose at that moment in time, but Ramran still holding strong here. There's now Grumpy looking to put a, some pressure onto the orange net. Nihilus Penguin. Nice to touch that one back to the side. A lot of ping pong going on between the teams here. And now Rukawa looking to get a pass in the middle. Minute remaining here. Game still tied up. Could see our first overtime of the day. Good touch into space from Refka as Nihilus Penguin trying his best get another touch on that but Arceus is going to try and take this one himself Dipsy love putting that pressure back on 40 seconds left and it seems it's it's a complete back and forth here jam no real team wants to take full control great, great touch from Refka though as he tries to get it oh this one's gonna be wide open oh Refka at the last moment I thought that was a wide open net but great rotation great defense from Ram Ranch, and they keep it a tie game. And really, he was at a disadvantage. Rukava was coming in together with Dipsy and was trying to bump Refke out, recognizing that that play must have been done. But Refke was still faster than anyone on the post-game strong side. And that perfect chance for a counterattack. Open net, practically, was left begging. Well, they might now only to do just kill the ball. Oof, Dipsy. Dipsy gets another touch on it, but still bring us into the very first overtime of today. Ram Ranch and Post Game Strong exchanged some blows, but as you said, Craftman, none of the team looked like they took the complete control of the play. It was more in really bouts of time where both the teams controlled the play for a little bit, but never looked like they were running away with the game. Indeed, and we are back to this kind of ping pong style. Oh, Dipsy is going to get a demo onto Rafko. Could have opened up a lane for his teammate to shoot. Just will be defended by the rest of Ram Ranch. And it's a very, very even matchup. Post game strong did take control early, but Ram Ranch have settled themselves in, and Nihilus Penguins put on some fantastic plays. Refka starting to get into the game now as well. And here he goes once again, trying to get that ball back into the middle for his teammates. It will actually be done by Ra Rakua. As now, no one really wanted to commit too hard on this. No one wanted to give up the first game here in overtime. Both, team, both teams only really committing one man at a time. Here comes Refko over the top, though. After Grumpy had his shot, Nihilus Penguin put a weak shot. He easily cleared down by Dipsy. And now he's got to take on three members of Ram Ranch on his own. Not going to happen, but here come the rest of post-game strong. And they end up giving away. Great touchdown from Grumpy to Refka. Just couldn't make contact. A little bit too strong. But this is great pressure now from Ram Ranch. They're keeping this ball deep in Orange territory for an extended period of time. And it's giving them more and more opportunities as post-game strong get a little bit more boost star of every time. Yeah, this is a perfect chance for Ram Ranch to strike, especially knowing that the post-game strong quite often uh, make whiffs in the midfield as well. Just put a little bit more players oh. up front. While still thinking about your defense, Ram Ranch's defense sometimes can also be pretty vulnerable. And I think Ram Ranch had the a recipe for a victory. Right now, they're keeping on that pressure going, just keeping on bringing the ball. While Pros Game Strong still can find their strength, it seems, on the field. I still feel like they, the best play style that really suited them were the passing plays on the ground. Not in the air, but specifically that those short ground passes. Here, though, it seems like they're really insisting on going in the air. And seemingly, that's not really their strongest suit. Yeah, and you t talk about... Uh 
recipe for victory here for Ramra. Just like we said, it would be their first game win. Like, single game win within this series. Since week one, where they took on Nine Game Esports. I'm clear from Nihilus Penguin now. Down to Rafka. Looking in the middle for Grumpy. He's actually going to be shadowing right behind. Going to get beaten out by Dipsy, though, and Nihilus Penguin. Touch here, a touch there, just throws post game strong off every now and again. And they end up giving these balls back away. There comes Grumpy over the top. He's going to get it. Puff of smoke and they take the game in overtime. Their first game victory since week one. Ram Ranch slowed the game down. They weren't going for the long clears for the mad plays that really kept the ball away from them rather than in their own control. And be, uh, really just slowly outplaying their opponents at every step of the way. They finally get themselves to win. That's the really that's the second win of uh, game one for them in a whole duration of league so far. So they should be pretty happy with their performance. And yet again, another sub comes in clutch. First it was Chrysic. This time it's Irie or Nihilist Penguin. <laughs> Ram Ranch might be looking at dealing a pretty hard blow to post game strong. A uh, loss in the series. Again, I'm I'm counting my chickens pretty early here, Craftman. Mm -hmm. But a loss to post game strong would put uh, in a whole series would put him at one and four in a reasonably similar situation. Actually, it will be a completely identical situation to Ram Ranch since they will be with their victory one and four in league themselves. But for now, it has been a pretty close start. So it might as well be a pretty close series coming from this point on. I still feel post game strong are not playing to their strengths. The cards that they're holding or the cards they're trying to play are some of the weakest that they've got. And Ram Ranch, if they continue the same play style, if they really put, uh, like continue this more of a calm approach to the game, I feel like they can find a lot more chances on the field. Indeed. And Ram Ranch, I think they're going to be uh, a little bit more energized after that. <laughs> and Ari's actually changed his name back to... Thank you. To Ari from Nihilus Penguin. Thank you very much to clear up that confusion uh, as we get started here on game number two. From post game strong, what I want to see is just a little bit more ball control. They seem to be taking one shot and then just giving up and retreating and going for that hard rotation every single time. Kind of want to see them taking a more high line and maybe going for some half rotations every now and again just to keep the pressure on Ram Ranch because they were able to do it last time. Here comes Ari over the top. Bump frock play didn't work out from Refka. As he will now take control on this right-hand side of the field for him. Dipsy doesn't let that one touch. And again, every, all these hard clears from both teams. It's just kind of just resets both teams. And they're not letting any sustained pressure happen. And it's just all down to these hard clears. Sometimes it's beneficial to make a really hard clear to relieve the pressure of your own half. Sometimes it's, it's just like that. You are giving your possession to your opponent for no apparent reason. And this is exactly how Ram Ranch scored that goal in the overtime. They, instead of uh, getting a clear on the other side of the field and hoping something sticks, no, they stuck to the ball themselves and got themselves a goal. Here they finally get back into the other half, but it seems like another series of stepping on each other's toes is happening for Ram Ranch. They are, in a way, in a pretty tough situation still because Grumpy himself is technically a sub. Previously, uh, Refke was playing with Afkas and Super, uh, but Super has since left the team, was replaced by Grumpy. Uh, and um, so it's it's a pretty new squad, in a way, still fighting through. They look promising in the previous week, and I'm hoping they will just need some extra time to take to really come into their full strength. Here, though, a little bit of uh, unfamiliarity with each other, it seems, still. Yeah, and that's probably what's causing all those double commitments as well. You see Grumpy quite a lot going uh, for the same ball as Ari, or excuse me, as Refka. Now, Ari looking up for Refka. Oh, just couldn't get it down to Grumpy, just misses that one. Grumpy looking to go for the bump play instead, just to mess with the heads of post game strong. Still coming up for half time through here, this game number two. No goals on the board for either team. Could be an opportunity now for Dipsy as he goes up onto the backboard looking for his teammates. It's going to be a big clear now from Refka keeping control of this. Ari's down in the midfield, ready to come up. He does indeed. 
And you see a lot of this, a lot of the time it's the ca sort of carrying and going demo. But what a touch there from Mary, dunking that one down, sneaking it under the crossbar. A great opening and a great pass by Grumpy as well, just chipping it on the other side of the field. Boys Game Strong still preferring to stay on the ground, not challenging uh, any of the shots by Ram Ranch in the air. And this time they guessed wrong. Irie still continues to carry the Ram Ranch team, really feeling like, hey, if I allow my teammates to do what they can do best, and that's sometimes it's set up, sometimes it's shots that will lead to follow-up shots, I can come in and clean this all up, get all the goals, be be the hero. <laughs> but of course, most importantly, get Ram Ranch first series victory so far. And they right now are looking like the part, but in many thanks to the fact that the post game strong are still not looking like the best cells that we've seen previously. Yeah, well, you talk about the first series victory, still plenty of time to go before that happens. So, plenty of time for a post game strong to get their game strong once again. Is this pressure from Ram Ranch is just causing them a lot of issues? You see, some a lot of the time, I was mentioned just before the goal there as well, a lot of the time where Ram Ranch are starting to carry this ball into the orange half of the field, they're booming it up and then rushing and demoing it whoever is in defense and then leaving it for uh, one of their teammates to, to shoot on that open net. It's a great strategy. Dirty strategy, some might say. Uh, but it's a strategy nonetheless. And uh, post-game strong aren't accounting for that. They're not accounting for these bump and demo plays. Well, it's, it's hard to adjust, really. It will throw you in the loop if you have to consider that during every single play that you make. It's like keeping your mind at so many things at once. You might you will start either missing your shot or you will not adjust yourself properly for the demolitions to come. It's best to perhaps play faster than your opponent. Just outpace them and outsmart them. But, you know, that the threat of, man, I'm going to get bumped or demolished. I know that the players coming out for me will be weighing on them pretty heavily, not allowing them to get attacks started or even uh, make successful plays in defense. You see, though, the post game strong in the last seconds of the game number two has come into control and got themselves stuck in the blue side of the field. But it only takes one good clear, and the Ram Ranch seemingly will be surviving this game with only one goal to their name, but it's still a second victory for them. Oh, well, we may actually get two. Indeed, Grumpy will put that one in for two goals to nothing. And that is going to be this second game victory in favor of Ram Ranch. Only one game away now from taking the first series that they're going to win. And crucially, if they do win this next game, it will be a 3-0 sweep and keeps their dreams of LAN alive. If not, at least until the next game is played and potentially they're mathematically eliminated but there you go ram ranch two games up only one more left for them to get a victory and keeps their season alive yeah, it'll be the the beautiful cinderella story that ram ranch down on their luck through first half of the season will suddenly come in and be be the princess or the prince or i mean i'm not judging whoever they want to be they definitely can be and right now against versus post game strong they are trying to finally get their first win man that would be a huge morale booster for them finally getting that one off their board and right now post game strong seemingly allowing them i still i'm still expecting arceus and rukava finally starting uh, arranging the passing place on the ground I feel like the space is there, it's just that they never use their possession to start uh, an attack. There's still it's clears, booms, and of course the interference play. The Ram Ranch is playing and throwing at them. It's it's definitely not helping for them to execute their game plan when it starts breaking down roughly at step one or step two. But the potential is third there. Dipsy, uh, I believe he's still pretty darn strong for his team. Uh, let me quickly check. We, we've been praising Arceus and, and Rukava, but Dipsy was uh, pretty crucial for his team as well. Ten goals uh, and uh, really being quite strong. Arceus usually the setup player. Actually, I'm, I'm telling uh, yep, slightly more passes, <laughs> I suppose, than Dipsy himself. So post game strong have the capability of set to set up the plays and to finish the plays. It's just throughout, throughout the whole series so far, Craftman, I haven't seen them even approach that spot. Yeah, and it's all down to the way that Ram Ranch is playing. Like we mentioned, all the hard clears that they're doing, they're just booming this ball downfield, and then they're able to 
just give post game strong enough things to worry about uh, they're not able to get back into the blue half the nice little dribble there from refka Going to give the first opportunity to Ramraj. Oh, Arceus almost put it on himself. Going to leave it wide open for Refka. Oh, Rukawa could make the touch. Actually touched it to the side, but leaves it for Refka. And Ramraj up 1-0 within the first minute. I'm sorry, but Dipsy, the player I said, needs to step up right here. In my opinion, made two mistakes. First, didn't get a challenge going when he was going back to the net. And then wasn't supporting his teammates where the shot, the follow-up shots came in. Dipsy was just there, but not in the play. And post-game strong, the rest of his teammates were already been thrown into a loop, and so many shots they needed to stop backwards, boostless. And then they were technically almost one player down since Dipsy just didn't participate in that play at all. Maybe he can find something in the attack. My God, he almost does. Not on this attempt. But it doesn't feel right when you can just simply waltz through the opponent's defense. Oh! And Especially speaking of waltzing through the defense, <laughs> what a passing play from Grumpy. And those demos as well. Back back there, I think Rafka demoed one of the post game strong players. And then Ari was able just to bang it into that right-hand side of the net. Up 2-0. Fantastic play from Ram Ranch. This is what we've been wanting to see from them in the last four weeks and now we're starting to see it jam they are starting potentially their comeback in the league and it's all down in my opinion to ari ari has given them so much confidence and so much space to work with post game strong are really down in their luck and they do not know what to do with ari uh, well, it is it's magic of a sub, man. That's all I can say. We had some, some great ones coming in. And uh, really, Ari, Ari has, uh, as I mentioned previously, Ari has played previously as a sub uh, instead of Primea. So really has some experience in this league. And right now, man, may, maybe maybe they should have picked uh, Ari for one of the teams. I'm, I'm not sure if Ari has played in one of the teams that tried to qualify. Oh. But right now... Irie and, of course, the combined effort of Ram Ranch. It's, it wouldn't have been a game of 3-0 without the whole of the Ram Ranch really contributing to the whole play. Look at that. Another one coming in. Everyone has a goal in Ram Ranch. And they really want to close this game before it has even finished. Crap, man. We even are not past the half point. Already three goals, the most Ram Ranch have scored so far in the series. Just continue on the pressure. Our post-game strong are looking for the answers. I don't think they have enough time to find them. Yeah, of course. And talked about the combined effort from them. Here comes Refka with a the fourth for his team. But I told you only about Grumpy and him double committing quite a lot. That's that's really died down here in this game number three. They're starting to communicate with each other a lot more than they have been doing. And Grumpy is starting to put himself in better positions. And it's just allowing Ramranch to run away with this game number three right now. Still, uh, we still do the St do still do half of have half of the game left to go but it looks like it's out of contention as ari will score the fifth and actually score his second there great pass from refka off the backboard where is the defense post game strong though nowhere to be found Craftman. No, and yeah, really the no. we we have half of the game but seemingly that half will only serve to ram range to really let themselves like have a good day out to score as many goals as they possibly can. Grumpy, oh, he won't reach it. Man, Grumpy was already setting up for this. He's feeling it. He's going for the challenges that perhaps he would never go for, uh, considering them too risky. But now, just hanging on that backboard, looking for a pass. Irie coming in a little bit too high. Post game strong. We're absolutely stunned by their opposition. Long gone are the times of game number one, where both teams went into the overtime. It is all Ram Range, all in the attack. And post game strong can only salvage salvage this game, really. There's there's almost nothing to salvage. One constellation, two constellation goals, maybe. But there's more insult to injury as more demolitions come in, and the post game strong are down by players, down on their luck, down on goals, down on everything, Craftman. And soon they will oh. be down oh. with Ram Ranch at the bottom it of the table. But man, what a game. Yeah. Even even then, Jam, it was that ball was trickling towards the net. It was a wide open shot. I think it was Dipsy who had it. 
and then just Refka comes out of nowhere and blocks it. It's just to be on post game strong right now. It must be so frustrating because you're throwing everything you have at this team. This team who hasn't won a single series yet, and now they're just humiliating you and about to sweep you three games to nothing. Still a minute left to go. They might get another one. There's again. Oh my god, they do eventually get it that time. But just Ari out of nowhere just wants to defend this net net with his life, not letting Rukawa have an inch. Does actually fall to Dipsy in the end and makes it 5 1. We could have, we do have a potential Brazil in our hand. Oh, oh Jim. Put, put Ooh, the we... Rocket League World on Brazil alert. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's like no hair alert, uh, but only for Brazil's man. Crafter, uh, I think we're getting them quite a lot. Oh, man, oh, we won yet in this time. No, we can take ourselves oh. off Brazil alert. Never mind. <laughs> man, in, in a way, I'm slightly disappointed, actually. But whatever it is, post game strong, find two quick ones. Same flank as well. Mm. Almost the same play as well, as they quickly hit the, uh, the ball past the defender of Ram Ranch on the flank. <sighs> It is, just like it's mathematically possible for Ram Ranch to uh, actually get in top four, just as it is mathematically possible for Post Game Strong to get there as well, it is mathematically possible for Post Game Strong to get the snowball going. Ram Ranch themselves were going pretty happy. Oh, oh Dipsy. Unfortunate to put it on the, on actually on the oh, edge to no. roll it up. <laughs> oh, it's as carnage out there now. Man, it's Carmageddon. This is Rocket League, not Carmageddon. Please behave yourself. <laughs> Post game strong just looking for it, but grumpy, oh, grumpy. killer block. Oh. And all the dreams of post game strong have been dashed. Just smacked down into the ground. Two blocks in a row as well. Grumpy were just yeah, having those well. shots set up for him. And then there's an easy sweat away. Post game strong just swatting the, uh, the shots themselves at, with the last strength and are not able to put it past the midfield. Yeah, very well blocked by Grumpy. And. And he's going to be a threat going forward in Ram Ranch's last half of the season. The last two games they need to play are against the two top teams at the moment. But what a win it is for them right now to get a win on the board in a 3-0 clean sweep. Ram Ranch have won their first series of the BESL Pro League here in week number five. And they're going to let this ball touch down. Yes, they do. <laughs> Eventually. Uh, six two in the final game, and don't get me don't get me wrong, Jam, but I th I believe I said at the start of this stream before we uh before we saw the first game against uh with Wei Eight Inspector, I'm pretty sure I said Wei Eight won their last game last week, six goals to two. Uh, am, am I right in saying that? Um... Who, was it? Who was it against? It was against main games. Yeah, six two. <laughs> so, fourth, uh, it was four three one nil. Oh my, my goodness! Ram Ranch have just emulated We I Eight from last week. Mm, conspiracy oh, theory, or or not? <laughs> I don't know. I'll I'll let the BSL community. I'll get the guys uh, in chat uh, decide on that one. Uh, but uh, but let's. Uh, Let's just think about that game and what it means for Ram Ranch in the grand scheme of things. They now have one game on the board. They are now one and three, or sorry, excuse me, one and four in the standings. Still potential to make it um, into land, but again, still going to be really, really difficult uh, for them uh, to get there. But who knows? We might see them there. A miracle could happen. Gleam EO giveaway that we have throughout the season. We have been talking about this so many times, but maybe if there is someone new here, uh, we can show you how Gleamio giveaway works and how it looks like. Um, basically, this giveaway contains a lot of a lot of free things that you can win. You can win a monitor, you can win so many cool water bottles, memory cards, notepads, power banks. Uh, I'm not gonna name everything. There's even a gaming chair there. Hypertown tickets and VIP tickets are even in the giveaway. And uh, it's pretty easy to enter. All you got to do is go to bessel.pro slash giveaway. And uh, you're going to see this wonderful list of things, how you can enter. There are 28 ways how to enter. Some of them you can even use daily so you can farm the points. But basically by entering 
by each way you gain your chances of winning. You have like bigger chances of winning uh, at the end. And uh, we're gonna roll the winners. We're gonna roll the winners uh, at the end of the season, which is the last stream is gonna happen on the 18th of May. Yes. Let's get going then, shall we, Jam? We've got two more series left. Uh, right left here in the BESL week number five and our next series up is going to be well our next two series are going to involve scam and g-sports first up they're going to take on professional ball chasers who we we alluded to this earlier they are currently the only other undefeated team apart from weia so a very tough challenge in front of scam and g-sports how do you rate this one yeah it's gonna be a toughie Really, the professional ball chasers, uh, the team that we've seen pretty little of. It's it's the fact that they have been missing through the majority of the weeks. Only got them themselves three games. But they're looking as strong, if not even stronger at some times, especially after this week, than we ate. So why not party KK and Phoenix? Every single time they are on a field, something magical happens. And really, now that uh, we saw the Weite um, playing as they are, man, I'm, I'm having actually doubts as about who exactly will be first. Especially knowing that Weite now have dropped a game. Mm. So now the only perfect result in the league belongs to professional ball chasers. And we man, we mentioned that previously. Ball chasers versus Weite during the final week, week number seven of the league, is going to be the biggest event of the year. And of course, then the Lang is going to happen and going to even eclipse that. So, man, so much happening. Yeah, it's all to play for now um, as professional ball chasers. They probably thought, uh, looking at Weite, they are going to be the ones to chase, and now they've kept pace with them. All they need to do here against Scavenge Esports is 3-0 sweep them, and they will maintain, like we said, their perfect record um, in the B BSL Pro League. Um, and it's going to be tough because Scavenge Esports, um, they are currently sitting, currently sitting, uh, well, they're now sitting fifth. They were sitting fourth coming into today. Um, so they've still got all to play for. A 2-2 two two record, seven games won, seven games lost. So this is going to be a key turning point in Scavenger's season if they can pull off probably the upset victory here against professional ball chasers. That's going to give them one hell of a chance to make in, uh, to at least cement their place in the top four and make it to that land. It, it is a, a perfect possibility for them, but man, it's going to be tough. It, uh, really, it's it's the trial by fire that they had in the first weeks. The Scavenger Sports are still sitting at a pretty a middle of the table result two and two and it has been a bumpy road so far today really the destiny for them is being decided they can either give themselves a great chance to end up in top four by winning both of the games uh they can be in a little bit of a limbo with three wins three losses and leave everything for the last week in their matchup with post game strong who today didn't look as impressive or they actually can su sustain a pretty huge defeat and go three and four and uh then it's gonna be pretty done actually how can it be three and four? Uh, oh no two and four there we go mm. uh, there, there has to be a one match somewhere so yeah two and four mm -hmm. it's it's gonna be a uh, pretty disastrous for them here in this matchup though i'm gonna give it to professional bullshit my god we've seen why not party kk and phoenix play previously they're they're getting the results in the games that some teams take several games to take phoenix with only nine games already has 20 points that's out of 20, 12 goals and eight assists he's just a menace out there in field he is a menace but uh you talked about the unbeaten record of professional ball chasers we saw we ih record get ruined today will we see the same with professional ball chasers uh with scavenge esports potentially going to be taking them down causing their first at least game loss of the season there's still all to play for though all to find out right here on the BESL Pro League Pro, Pro Ball Chasers in the blue Scavenge Esports in the orange side of the Epic Stadium right here we've got KK looking to get out to out to win and now Keo will keep this pressure or will try to clear out but keeps the pressure deep in orange territory Phoenix will get demoed for his troubles, but that's going to leave Scavenge Esports with a path through back into the blue half of the pitch. Trying their best to get anything going, but it's a good start here in the first 30 seconds or so. 
professional ball chasers really maintaining the possession and the pressure. Oh, but oh, not for long. Oh my god, oh that should have been a gold. Ragus oh, found himself in the perfect no. opportunity on a flank. They open up the defensive pro ball chasers with a tin knife, or rather with a knife that opens up tin cans. But the woodwork held on strong, and what a great start this could have been for Scavenge. Instead, instead it's a little bit off. Just a little bit off, but what a chance there at the start for Scavenge Esports. Almost making it 1-0 very early on, and professional ball chasers add a little bit of a of a headway. And Frosty and to get the double touch. Oh, just sneak under is why not party? We'll put the pressure back down into the orange half. Professional ball chasers a lot of. A lot of pressure, but not a lot of shots. Still zero shots registered for them. Meanwhile, Scam G-Sports have three to their name. Yep, and it's still a pretty much more even game than I anticipated. Pro Ball Chasers trying to put on the speed. They're definitely looking that they have plenty of that in their reserves, but they're not using all of it right now. And the pressure, the pressure that they could have potentially shown didn't amount to anything. This was their only first shot on target. Scam G Sports have been pretty confident in closing down pro professional ball chasers even before they reach the final third. Keo now. Looking to try and get the first goal of their matchup underway. And now they pass it out to Regis. Or Ragus, sorry. As KK tried to defend that. Why not party? Oh my goodness. Had to make that touch. This is good pressure from Scavenge Sports in the first minute, two and a half minutes in this year in this game number one. KK now looking to get it back into the middle. But it is all Scavenge Sports really in the first half of this game. Pro Walsh Chasers still looking for a real clear cut chance and they've not been given it because Scavenge Sports have just been rotating really well. Yeah, and I think partly, partly what helps Scout G Sports right now is this one of those uh, times when they're playing with their full squad. Previously, we've seen Kikis and Flying Midget substitute Frosty and Ragus. Uh, here, though, it's the full and proper normal squad for the Scout G Sports. And seemingly, finally, everything's clicking out for them. Russian the Ball Chasers, though, they I don't think they want to they wanna be dropping in this one. Uh, their, their rivalry with Weite. I would like to still see that keep it kept alive. Right now, though, just like we are today, the two leaders of the league are not showing what I think their full capabilities. Yeah, of course, we mentioned the we are eight versus pro ball chasers. That's going to be happening a couple weeks from now, week number seven. Final week. We are game of the week, but of course, that's still to come. Minute left in this one, just over that. We're still to find a goal. Nil, 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 and now you see professional ball chasers starting to control this midfield a little bit more. They're starting to find each other. There's a pass out to Phoenix. Going to get broken apart by Frosty. And now Ragus will have an opportunity to clear this one downfield. And of course it's going to get interrupted by two players of pro ball chasers. And again... We saw it in the first half of this game where Scavenge Esports just kept the pressure on as much as they could. It is now flipped and Pro Ball Chasers are now doing the exact same. 30 seconds left, looking to get a goal and not send us to our overtime here. Keel tries to clear, going to be put by, back by Phoenix. Frosty gets the touch, will get credit for the save. And they might have one more chance here. In regulation at the very least. KK looking for it. Oh, Phoenix looking for the double tap off the backboard. Not going to drop. Doesn't even make the touch. And now why not party? Looking for Phoenix in the middle. Great passing plays. But just not able to connect on them. And this ball will head back towards the orange net for one last time. Here in regulation it will drop. And we find ourselves in overtime in the very first game of this series. Uh, we, I'm having a little bit of deja vu from our previous series, Craftman, but unlike the 3-2-2 uh, two, two overtime that we went to, it is a 0-0 zero, zero affair. And I'm still pretty darn surprised that the professional ball chasers are the team that haven't scored a single goal. It's currently down in shots and is threatened by Scavenge Esports the, from the word go. As the control was in the hands of professional ball chasers at the end of regulation time, Scavenge Esports do, did want to get a quick one to... Uh, 
almost like steal the ball out, uh, steal the game off the ball chasers, since I still feel is there a fair net dangerously open, but not enough danger, not enough opportunities coming in for pro professional ball chasers quickly enough, or they are not reacting quickly enough to all the openings that Scam Esports have. And that open net was well handled by Keo, just slowing down the play enough to let his team rotate in. And Frosty will get the clear and now back into the blue half. They will keep the pressure on. Will Scavenge Esports actually letting it up for just a moment while Phoenix will hard clear. And now Rag is told to take that one back down. Keo able to keep control and now they have an opportunity. Here in overtime, back into the middle. Oh, just mistimed and why not? Why not party? Able to get it away, and it is his clear that allows KK to go way upfield. Gets the demo on one player, and a minute 16 into overtime. Leaves it wide open, and professional ball chasers take the first game. If you can break out the defense any other way, just go for a bump or a demolition. That was really the best play the ball chasers have done all game and scavenge esports looking for their own goal on the other side of the field i wouldn't even call this an overextension. is just that with the position that they found themselves into one demolition completely crossed out their chances and you saw professional ball chasers all three players suddenly finding themselves behind the lines of scavenge esports and finding an open net in front of them it's a victory for professional ball chasers uh, but just like in the series of we eyed against spectre it hasn't been the cleanest of the games. It has been an absolute nightmare. Uh, you could see Steve uh, see the um, composure that the ball chaser are showing and the the skill that they can definitely uh, use uh, when maybe just just even getting the touches to the ball. But it hasn't been a domination. So for professional ball chasers, there might be still, a, or rather, it's maybe on the other side of the field for Scam G Sports. There's still an opening, a big old opening, I think, that they can use against the ball chasers to deal a blow to yet another leader. And that really was a game of two halves as well, Jam. You had Scam G Sports really keep on a lot of pressure and rotating very well in the midfield and keeping a lot of pressure, putting so many shots onto that blue net. And then something changed. Professional wall chasers just changed their mindset somehow and then kept everything sort of flipped the script. Oh my oh. god. Oh, Phoenix. Oh my goodness. What a mind game. Talk about flipping the script. Look at this. Look how much he fakes out Frosty and makes him flip. Oh my god. That is insane. Phoenix, you fiend. Play of the game right oh, there. Play of the day. Play, play, play of the, play, play of the game. Well, uh, who knows? I mean, the play of the tournament. We, we had some really good ones. And I think I, I remember Face as well. Mind Games Esports even some, uh, a couple of times lived up to their name and get, got a couple of Mind Games going. But man, Phoenix just saw the future. Oh. Just like Doctor Strange, he saw a million of futures and thought, I'm going to use this one. The one where I completely <laughs> beat another player in a standstill game. Why not party? Oh. Gets a second one going just as Kevin G Sports defense gets overloaded with ball chasers putting shot after shot. Yeah, and just that, that tiny little touch lets why not party get his first goal of the day as well. But I'm still not over that mind game from <laughs> Phoenix. That is that is the ballsiest move I have ever seen in a game of Rocket League. He he twitches so much and then eventually makes Frosty flick. Oh, but just. We're only 40 seconds into this game, Jam. We've got three goals already, one being absolutely insane. And Frosty has brought it back within one. This is nuts. Especially considering the fact that the previous game ended up in a 0-0 regulation. Uh -huh. We went in the overtime yeah. with neither of the teams scoring. All of a sudden, with one minute gone, less than one minute gone, we already have three. I almost asked myself, where have these goals been all the previous game? And seemingly Pro Bowl Chasers were holding on to many of those. The game has been slow, but now that the Ball Chasers have picked up the pace, it looks like Scam and G Sports can't keep up. And really, tiny mistakes here and there being late to the challenges, it all adds up. And eventually, Ball Chasers break down the defense, get another goal on board. We go to the kickoff where a situation is reset, but then it just starts all over again. Yeah, we'll see how these guys reset off their kickoff. Man, we're only a minute into this game, and it's nuts already. This is going to be turning into a really high-scoring matchup. Here comes Frosty back into the middle. Couldn't connect up with Ragus. 
heel got downward for his efforts as well. They'll well, big double commit there. Will be able to recover. Frosty going for the double touch wasn't communicated to by Keo that he wanted to go for it as well, and it takes two players out of the game. But very well recovered by Ragus, keeping this one deep in blue territory. Frosty now looking for the double tap once more. He's <gasps> going to get it. Oh, Ragus couldn't follow it up. That just missed by about an inch. And Keo tries to take it back over the defense. But these touches that Frosty are get is getting, it's going to work eventually. And he is getting so close every time. He got through the ball chaser's defense. I thought that, man, the initial shot, okay, but the follow up, they threatened the net of Pro Bowl Chasers with two players and almost got that through. Now, with two players committed on the attack, it's some opportunity for them. Not sure what the plan was, though, but they know that the opportunities present themselves. Professional ball chasers can leave their defense open, and two versus one. Here's Cam. These scores have a chance. They only need to be mindful of their own defense because the clear is always a threat when Paul. And professional ball chasers have the ball. Well, you got to watch out for Phoenix when he gets the ball close to his car just like that. Face out Frosty, but not the second man. Frosty's probably got a vengeance out against Phoenix. The twitchiest main game I have ever seen in Rocket League. That is going to go down in history, in BESL history. Maybe in Rocket League history. To the side now. You've got to imagine Scavenge Esports want to go as quickly as they possibly can because you've got two minutes left. Games, All the goals right now that we've had in this game were scored in the first minute. And we've got we've gone two minutes without, without a single goal. Come on, lads. Keep it up. That's a very strange roller coaster right here on the field. It's just <laughs> moment of they're burst of action and then nothing. That's what they're doing. Uh, oh, my, that may, maybe not too much of a breather, though. Frosty scores from his own half. As the entirety of professional ball chasers are committed on this play, Frosty gets over one. Phoenix can't get back in time. And it brings it back within a one goal game. Minute 47 left. Still plenty of time left and plenty of goals still to be scored here in game two. The moment we can play in Craftman, they score. And Phoenix, really yeah. credit to him. Despite going initially for that challenge, he quickly realized that he has been beat and uh, made a turnaround the moment he realized that of course it wasn't enough but the vision was still there and open net opportunity for ball chasers man they immediately want to strike back after they have been dealt a blow themselves well, kk almost got the double touch as well off the backboards not able to make it drop but minute 16 left now Keo, oh crucial touches phoenix was coming over the top there ragus Puts into a great possession now. Phoenix going to try and clear this one down. He actually clears it way over the head of both Frosty and Ragus. Now Keo is going to have to take his shot from the middle of the field. Here comes Frosty looking for that touch off the backboard. He's going, been going for it all this game. Not been able to make anything drop just yet. Keo now bringing the pressure back around that left-hand side. 45 seconds, less than a minute to go now. And Scavenge Esports still looking for that one goal to send us a potential overtime once again. Last one was 0-0. This one could end up 3-3, but not a KK has anything to do with it. Takes a shot on net, draws a defender out. Not No follow-up from his team just yet. And now Phoenix will steal the boost and will allow KK to come up here. Got all the time in the world, all the boost in the world to work with, and all the space in the world as everyone from Scavenge Esports was trying to clear that one down, and it leaves the net wide open. Yeah, rarely do you see double commits working, but since Scavenge Esports have already used everyone, and with Last Defender being late to the challenge, even a double commit works for professional ball chasers. Scavenge Esports had a couple of chances to bring the ball on the other side of the field of oh man, straight from a kickoff. Any of the chances of a two quick goals from Scavenge Esports get completely wrecked. This one is squarely professional ball chasers game. I love this kickoff. I strive <laughs> to hit every single one of these if I get the chance. I know our, um, our very good friend Eternal J is, he said that the only thing he's good at is setting up these kickoffs. And right now it almost <laughs> felt like a J play since professional ball chasers put themselves with uh, outside of the reach of Scam G Sports in game number two. And what, what a changeup, Ratman. Between the game number one 
one might say even the dead game no goals called the regulation go finally scored in the overtime and both teams not really getting the shots on target going to this to a seven goal game where scavenge esports honestly had a chance knowing that they've been really this close to getting the opportunities themselves just that ball chasers used just put slightly more shots on target but use that many more opportunities themselves yeah um and scavenge esports like you said they were in it the entire way um just so just so you know i'm hitting save replay on this uh on this match because i want to watch actually that phoenix good idea again <laughs> it was uh, i can't explain it if you don't if you don't know rocket league that well you just it, it's hard to explain because you're if you're frosty in that situation because it was against frosty you're seeing phoenix coming you're just like he's twitching like that he's twitching like that is he gonna hit it and eventually he backflips bang open net phoenix gets it absolutely nuts play and i hope uh we go and review that as if if there's like a top 10 plays of the season <laughs> i want that to be number one because that is absolutely insane i've never seen even like a pro player do that in rlcs because they're also wise to it but then you you know that's you know that's coming he's touching touch, touch oh no he's gone there you go boom phoenix maybe it's the g2 energy that he's bringing he's got that decal that decal on his uh on his octane you never know he might come up clutch here here comes one and uh, why not a party here in game number three trying to open the scoring for professional ball chasers earlier on they want this one done in three but scavenge esports feel they were robbed those couple of games they were in control in game one they had brilliant chances in game two and yet they find themselves in a two nil hole and what needing to reverse sweep at this point Good news for them, no quickly conceded goals. Uh, a little bit of control as well. They just need to be really careful. And it seems like the ball chasers can really utilize their clears to their advantage, put scavenge esports the moment they overextend just a little bit in a very precarious situation. Uh, the good news for scavenge esports, it's seemingly that they can do themse that themselves to their opponents if professional ball chasers just uh, look away again for just, just a moment. Scavenge esports might hit them on the counterattack. Why not party trying to start a party here in game number three but no one came to his party there was no teammate to pass to but phoenix is actually gonna have a wide open net no one went to the party in net and phoenix has popped his party popper i'm trying you see i'm trying i'm trying to run with it <laughs> yeah. you, you, you're trying like to cram as many parties <laughs> yeah. into one sentence as possible yeah but it was phoenix the party scored anyway so <laughs> the party is a completely different place. The party is at Scavenge <laughs> Esports Net. Sometimes the, you can really see the difference uh, between how quickly uh, players and the teams are going for these challenges. And professional ball chasers, in that very moment, they, the idea of let's get the ball out of here as quickly as possible, let's challenge that ball in the air, came to them much quicker than to Scavenge Esports, who are thinking, uh, we're trying to attack right now, we're trying to attack right now. Something coming in too late for a challenge by that point oh. and kk oh I mean, he's right there he's right in front of them and yet he still does that little dance off the phoenix's pass and phoenix really hats off to him he recognizes that there's a second player coming in shot could have been good but scavenge sports sort of already were set up to that phoenix didn't have enough speed to give it a lot of uh, a lot of oomph either no oh no no okay oh, the, the, no off i think the party's spoiled again. by this point craft man as it was yeah. singing praise to that previous goal by professional ball chasers, putting two players on a kickoff and yet none of them getting the ball as it goes past them, that's a mis uh, that's positioning mistake. If you see your teammate on the ball going right, you go left. Oh man, scavenge yeah. sports. Well, good news, only two minutes have passed. Bad news, they're against professional ball chasers and they still, the scavenge sports, that is, doesn't have, don't have a single shot to their name. Yeah, still looking for that first crucial shot. It could swing the table, uh, at least in this game. Three minutes still to go, and you feel that Scavenge Esports have really run their course, and they must be so exhausted. And you would think frustrated as well, because in the last couple of games, they have had some brilliant opportunities, but they've just been stymied by this relenting pressure from 
Oh, sorry, unrelenting pressure from professional ball chasers. Oh, Phoenix trying to sneak one in the bottom right corner. Uh, won't drop it this time, but now Keo looking to get it down. Ragus trying to play some mind games of his own. Not happening. Oh, Frosty almost put it in. It actually puts it out to KK. But once again, professional ball chasers are not giving an inch. And despite them having a con commanding lead at this point, in the third game that they're potentially win for a sweep, they're playing like they're 4-0 down rather than 4-0 up. Yeah. They, but man, they can afford. They Right now, they can even afford going so hard on the attack, knowing that the scavenge esports players are out of that play specifically. And it's just seemingly perhaps a little bit too easy for them, especially in this game number three. It has started out slow, but the longer the series has went, it has picked up professional ball chasers and they were are not looking as calm and out of it as we at were looking this week no they're looking pretty strong still and kk phoenix and why not party still every single one of these players i can single out as the the core player so whoever is with the ball on the side of the ball chasers they can chase that ball pretty darn good indeed yeah they are focused then on this match and you compare them to we i from earlier Professional ball chasers do indeed look like the better team this week. Of course, we'll find out for real who, have, who the better team is in week seven. That's still to come a couple of weeks down the line. But here in this one, Scavenge Esports are scavenging for as much uh, time on the ball as they possibly can. But again, professional ball chasers are just making, giving themselves the advantage in the possession game. And it just comes to a head there. Just so much possession, so much pressure. And the team play there to make Phoenix get his uh, second goal of this game. Five goals to nil. We still have a minute to play. That uh, that last play looked as if professional ball chasers were at home. So many passes went the right way uncontested. Scavenge Sports players were pretty out and about. They were trying to obviously get a challenge in, perhaps grab a little bit of boost in return, but it w that wasn't really working out for them. I even saw Frosty go to the middle, not not even reaching the boost going back. By that point, it was already too late. Professional Ball Chaser just feels like they own that place, that place in front of the net of Scavenge Sports. So, man, it's, it's 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 only reasonable that the final result of this game specifically is five to zero. Uh, but I feel really worried for Scavenge Esports coming into the next matchup because they're not done yet. They still have another series versus the Backflip Boys, and it will be a slightly different affair. Um, back, backflip Boys are not professional ball chasers. They're currently sitting pretty high, but I feel like there's not the same quality. But after being completely shut out, and I do mean completely shut out in the game number three, they're trying to make shots right now at their own net. <laughs> Still not a single shot on the net of professional ball chasers. And everything that we've been praising Scavenge Esports for in the first two games, or maybe let's say the first game, because the game number two went 5-2 and um, by the end really spiraled out of control for Scavenge Esports. Game number three, really nothing can be said for Scavenge Esports that damn, they, they looked as if at every single... Uh, Step of the way, they have been beat. To every single challenge, they arrived a little bit late. Every single movement on the field was reactionary to what professional ball chasers were doing. And Scavenge Esports could not chase the professional ball chasers, especially when they were pulling out these passing plays, something that I was hoping that Post Game Strong would be doing this week, something I expected from Weite for sure. Uh, right now, seemingly the best passing uh, quality is found on the side of professional ball chasers. Indeed, and like we've been saying all day long as well, professional ball chasers still completely undefeated, not just in series, but in games as well. Uh, they now go up to a record of, uh, well, 4-0 and in series and 12-0 and in games, and, and they overtake We Are 8 for the top spot, uh, and they will stay there after week number 5 has been and gone, and... Uh, speaking of being being gone, we have one only one more series left, and like you said, Jam, it is Scavenge Esports coming back for straight away after that uh, devastating loss from professional ball chasers. Uh, they are going to be taking on the backflip boys, who 
are just above them in the standings as well. They are currently in third place. Uh, three wins, two losses. Um, pretty much on their way to land. But again, Scavenge Esports, you really think they need to win here um, to at least hold on to one of those top four places. Yeah, there is a possibility for them to, um, at the very least, try and catch up on Spectre with a 3-3 three and three result. Uh, and also knock Backlit Boys down a peg because Backlit Boys currently sitting on a 3-2 and two score. Uh, with Scavenge Esports, 2-3. and three. So we might have... Uh, three teams on three and three sitting on third, fourth, and fifth spot. <laughs> uh, Mind Games Esports uh, in six, slightly out of reach with one and three result. And of course, Professional Ball Chasers and We Eye sitting on four and zero. So there's a battle in the middle of the league board that is currently looking, specifically with this match, it's going to be heating up. And this is the reason why I'm going to pick this match up specifically as our match of the week. Since wins or losses here, might uh, might have big implications coming to the end of the season. And really, the longer we go, the more games like that will be appearing on your screens since, man, so many implications. We might have teams just stopping each other for getting through. And Spectre, Scavenge Esports, and the Backflip Boys, seemingly battle is between them. We item professional ball chasers, let's just say, they have pretty much, I'd say, guaranteed, unless surprises happen, and they might as well. But the two other spots are... I'd say our prime for the taking, especially knowing the post-game strong grammar and mind games esports will do everything that they can to either try and contest for those spots or or just throw a little bit of a shade and chaos in a whole standing thing. Indeed, and uh, like we were saying, Backfoot Boys is currently sitting at 3-2. and two. If they were to lose this one, they'd be tied on record with Sc Scavenge Esports. Uh, it would just come down to the game differential, of course. Um, but this is this is really like you said it is going to be our matchup of the week final game of the week is always our match of the week uh, and the backflip boys and scam g sports currently sitting third and fifth respectively i think and i think this is a bigger matchup than we kind of think it or on the face of it, it kind of looks because i think whoever loses this one is pretty much disqualified themselves from lan whoever wins might still miss out but i think whoever loses this one has pretty much shattered their dreams of getting to lan and getting to the grand finals of the bsl pro league um so it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting one i can't call it because scavenge played so so well in that last game uh or that last series against uh professional ball chasers also just narrowly missing out on the first two games but backflip boys coming in fresh Scavenge might be a little bit tired after that match and they're just having to come straight back on stream and play this game. Might work out in their favor because they're hot uh, or warmed up at least. But Backflip Boys, they're coming in fresh so you never know. I think this is going to go all the way. I think this is going to go at five games. And, but I could not call it for the life of me who's going to take this one. Jam, do you? Can you uh, actually, I, I I do have an opinion on this one, uh, but oh. it, but it's great that <laughs> I'd say every single week that we have our match of the week, we consider this to be a game five affair, and so far we still haven't had that. We we pray for that every single time. But uh, last week, professional ball chasers demolished the Backflip Boys three to zero. Uh, we had a three one series where Scavenge Sports won against the Mind Games in week number three. This one. It is between the teams that are really close in position and the table, but it might not be as close when you really took uh, take a closer look to the teams. Uh, on the side of Backflip Boys, Kartu, currently number two in goals scored and fifth best shooting percentage. His teammate Garsho, third in goals and sixth best, best in shooting percentage. So those two players will be tearing uh, the defense apart. And with Skyrim Esports really not feeling that great today, it might be, well, they might already are in the big trouble here. They might be in the bigger trouble. Plus, uh, when you mentioned the hot cold situation, just recently, uh, I do believe it was Gibbs, the analyst for R uh, RLC as the biggest league in Rocket League. Um, uh, he went through the matches and he specifically tested that hypothesis. Whether uh, having two games in a row and two games in the same day helps the teams or hinders it. He found out that teams are losing more 
and they're playing a second supposedly a hot game that then they're just losing normal ones uh, they were playing just normally so we might apply that to this setup as well but the backflip boys and scavenger sports i'd say they're pretty ready craftman let's go what do you say yeah let's get this show on the road it's our match of the week backflip boys versus scavenge best of five here on dfh stadium winner i'm winner i'm predicting is going to knock the loser out of land contention and of course anything can happen in the next couple of weeks as well still two weeks left in the bsl pro league after this one and here we go backflip boys in the blue team scavenge staying on the orange side of things there's garcio looking to put some pressure on early here comes cartu around the left hand side going to get beaten by frosty who was pulling off some tremendous plays and some tremendous aerials off the walls, off the ceiling, what have you, in the last game. But he's going to get try to get dribbled by Kartu. Couldn't make the save. Is Ragus and Garsha will bang it in for the first goal. Maybe it wasn't as elegant as his Phoenix's dribble. It ended up with a boom, but it still gets the job done, especially since you saw backflip boys, not just one player coming out of, uh, against the defense of Scam Sports, the whole squad while chasing that ball all over the field. And Scam Sports were late, and with one player down due to demolition, man, it's really hard to defend. Your Ned oh. Garcio comes in and scores the second one. Even before we finish speaking about the first one, the speed is coming in. And a lot of questions, for me at least, were on Backflip Boys, seeing as they got themselves in a really good position. They got in pretty high, just off the fact that they played so many games. They already have played five, this is their sixth. But I had the suspicion that they've played against the, the weakest of the teams, got the wins there, really padded their stats, so to speak. But then the real test came in. Here right now, they're looking as if they're ready to take on the world. Absolutely, and... It was just a bit of a double commit on that goal as well. We just let Garsho take it. He chose it against what. And of course, a very, very quick start for the boys in blue, the backflip boys. We can put a lot of pressure on Scavenge now. As we said, they, they were kind of robbed of a couple of games against, against professional ball chasers. So they're looking to get their revenge here against this backflip boys, but seemingly just a little bit back and forth now. Backflip boys content to not push as hard as they have been doing now that they're 2-0 up. We want to see scavenge now. Put a little bit more pressure onto this blue net. That's a big miss from Sarius. They'll just leave it for Garcio as no one else was attacking from scavenge. And right now it is fairly neutral, fairly back and forth. One game, one play, one goal could change the face of things. Jam as Keo goes for a double touch off the save there. Yeah, the initial aggression for backflip boys have disappeared. Now they oh. need to work in defense. Man, they even can't get that one. Saris and Garcia all in the prime positions. But when that ball really hits the spot, it really hits the spot. In this case, Cam G Sports finally break down the deadlock. Backflip boys were looking as if they, just like we eight, were inviting their opponents onto them and ready to spring at any moment. Uh, this time, that strategy didn't really work out. Cam G Sports know exactly how to score. Indeed, and back to a one-goal game. Frosty has been looking dangerous all day long in the series against professional ball chasers and now here against backflip boys as well he's going to be the key member for me to take this one forward but what a block by sarius sees frosty trying to clear this one down long he's going for the volley here but then sarius oh what a block with the bottom of his car and no one there to save it away and back in front by two go backflip Sarius risks nothing, but is at a chance to gain a lot. And in that case, that risk, low risk, high reward, was exactly what he got. Brilliantly played. Pressure against shows for backflip boys where they know they can apply it. Quick response, oh. though. And we are we are getting entertained over here, Craftman. As Cam G Sports fight back immediately. And against the passing play, shot straight on target. 
wouldn't really pay the, have the same effect. Sarius was coming in, he could have read that pretty easily. But a pass, and all of a sudden the defense back for boys needs to reposition, needs to keep on guessing. As Cavendi Sports, if they continue the same approach, and this could be, well, this could be a tie game. We're, we have two minutes remaining still. We already had crazy, even one minute stretches here. Two minutes, plenty of time to completely change the whole thing. Oh, right, it's always nice. letting that one in for 4 2. But my oh my, this is a certainly an exciting matchup. And this is only game one, ladies and gentlemen. Minute 38 now. And the Scav and G Sports boys still looking for that tying goal. Keel trying to run a bit of disruption against Sarius. Now Frosty off the backboard. Going to leave it for Ragus. Tried to get it in the top left corner. Not going to happen. Frosty's going to have one more chance. He had plenty of boost, but not enough momentum as Sarius gets that one away. But Keel is still there. Still got some boost on his own. But no teammates around to help him as everyone who was rotated back in. Ragus gets Sarius out of the equation. Now Keo over the top. Oh, just couldn't read that one well. And it's going to let Sarius get the clear in finally. My God, Scavenge Esports just find themselves a perfect set of rotations to continue on applying pressure to the back of the boys. They could have done even slightly better, but it was already pretty great. It's just that it wasn't perhaps as fast to break out the defensive back of the boys. A couple of attempts looked slightly improvised and as that not as efficient. But they are in the half of Backflip Boys at, at the very oh, least. Whoa, oh, look my goodness, get it. Keel. Oh, off this back wall. He doomed, he dishes that ball right into the net. And that is going to be the tying goal here in game number one. 27 seconds left. Frosty didn't even need to confirm it. That had enough momentum to get itself in there. What a play from Keel after being shut out this entire first game Keo makes sure his name is is now known and we are looking at overtime right in the face now jam unless scavenge esports can make something happen here in the last 10 seconds garsho is actually going to have one more attempt by the looks of things sarius over the top that's going to get cleared to the side Karshu may have one more chance no he will not rag is going to keep this one alive up onto the top Keo actually keeps it alive where's frosty here he comes oh there's open net as well Oh, and it hits the floor just before the goal. And what an exciting last minute, but we find ourselves in overtime now, Jam. They only needed one more second, and that would have been it. Scavenge oh. Esports get, get rubbed by the clock, literally. All right, well, now can they continue the same on pressure? The kickoff, again, gives you a reset, puts everyone oh, in, the, in the identical situation. Defenders are still there, though. Not this time for Scavenge Esports. If they can continue the same onslaught that they've been on to through the last minute or even 30 seconds of regulation, Scavenge Esports can take this game off the back of the boys because they off they started horribly, let's be fair. But the longer this went, the more they felt like in their own element. Indeed, and they've become very, very confident in their play style and kind of figured out the backflip boys here. In game number one, minute on into this overtime, and it's still for me, Scavenge Esports, with the, with the momentum, with the confidence. Over backflip boys at the moment. This could be a wide open net. Frosty's going to have to make a touch there. Does indeed get it away, and he's able to get a counter attack going, but just runs out of boost at the last moment. Well played by Garsho though, staying up. Oh, crucial touch, not made by Ragus. And it leaves it for Sarius. Here comes, look at this. Garshow puts it there. That heals or Ragus had to make a touch where it really counted. And I think it was a miscommunication because Keel stopped going for it. And it let Sarius in. What a what an end to regulation, but what a disappointing end to the overtime for Scavenge Esports. Backflip boys. Get away with that one, really, by the skin of their teeth. Yeah, again, if, if only they had one extra second before going into the overtime, Scam G Sports would have taken the whole game. But the time is is a cruel mistress, and it was one small mistake. You said it, miscommunication. They couldn't figure out who's going to go for a ball, and neither of them got it. Yes, 
I believe it was a Ragus coming in pretty fast. Could mm -hmm. cleared it more powerfully and farther away from the net. But Kyo on the ground could have at least put it uh, uh, outside of back of the boys' reach. In the end, too many cooks spoiled the broth. And Scavenge Esports uh, sustained a defeat in the first first game of the series. This is our third game one overtime in a row, Craft Man. Something mm -hmm. about those introductory games that really throws both teams for uh, for an interesting loop. Now, though, it's a question of who indeed can continue on winning. So far, the team that has won the overtime has won the series as well. Could there be a change here? Scavenge Esports really need that, lest they want to uh, really mess up their result in the season. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned the first team to win overtime today has gone on to win the series in a sweep as well. It's all been 3 0 sweeps apart from that uh, first game with our first matchup with Spectre and We I8. Um, but again, anything could happen here. Both these teams, in my opinion, very evenly matched. For me, it's about the consistency from Scavenge Esports. We saw it against professional ball chasers. They just couldn't keep it up for the entire series, and that was almost a goal within the first 15 seconds. Trying to play that game close to the post is always oh, very risky, but he do eventually get it round, and Frosty will take the lead first. Remember when I said uh, the professional ball chasers look like they own the place in the Scavenge Esports defense? I just had the same impression when Scavenge Esports went in the backfoot boys' net. For a moment, I thought that they've dropped down on the pressure, almost started rotating back, but a good challenge on the flank allowed those players of Scam Sports who left to return back and again and continue on applying. And Backflip Boys broke. They allow the rotations, allow the shots to come in through, the passes to come in through. And as a result, that goal was an effort of Scam G Sports non stop taking uh, shots at the Backflip Boys net. And even Backflip Boys do break down. They do a minute into this one coming up now. Garshaw going to take the first shot on net in this game for backflip boys. Now the first real pressure coming out for them here in the orange half of the field. It took them a while to, or to sorry, it took Scavenge a while to get into the into the game. Game number one. Now it's taken Scavenge that or excuse me, backflip that long as well. That one was actually saved by Cartu, I believe. Or actually, excuse me, by Sarius with his dominance in the top left of the net. <laughs> After that shot from Garcio. Interesting times here as Backflip Boys again miscommunication. A minute and a half gone here. Backflip Boys still looking for that first goal. Here comes Keo over the top. Oh, what a bump on Sarius, but Garcio is there to clear it away. Yeah, they're not finding the same opportunities they've been finding in game number one. Keep kept to a pretty meager two shots. The game has been mostly happening in the midfield, or at least not reaching the net. And now the Scam Esports have really stepped up to the challenge that are blocking attempts by back the boys, the passing plays, or just the clears before they can reach that dangerous spot. And as a result, even this one goal lead despite the goal bonanza of the previous game, can be just oh, enough Frosty. for Scam Esports to hold on through. Oh, Frosty had a chance there. He just ran out of boost towards the end of that play, and Kartu be able to dribble that one out to safety. Still only a 1-0 lead, though, for Scam Esports. Looking for their second now. Right, Ragus trying to play a disrupt bumping play on Kartu. Misreads where he's going with that one. A double commit though. Frosty's going to have to resign himself to the fact that he's going to have to play a little bit of defense here. Be able to at least keep that one at bay for the moment. And now you see backflip boys starting to build their momentum, build their pressure here on this orange net. And it's just shot after shot. It, eventually, one of them is going to have to drop. But you, you just feel, and there it is, passed down from Cartu, and Garcho slams it home. A series of unfortunate events for Scavenge Esports. Uh, maybe challenges where the challenges shouldn't have happened, or just putting themselves in spots where that were immediately on the losing side against the Backwood Boys. It only took Backwood Boys about three touches to get it past the three defenders of Scavenge, and right now that miss, nobody's close for Backwood Boys, but man, that's another open net. Speaking of open nets, ooh. Really ties up this game change so quickly, Craftman, that I'm not it even really sure does. who I should be calling this for. 
yeah, this is so back and forth, it's ridiculous. Minute and a half left, just over that. And we have one goal apiece, could be staring at overtime in the face once again. Scavenge Esports looking to act quickly. They want to make sure they get this confirmed as a win for them in regulation. They don't want to face the misery of overtime that they've had recently. As I believe that was Keel running some bump plays in net. Not able to finish it as Ragus Frosty tried the air dribble, not able to drop. Here comes Keel now. Oh, that's a big overcommitment. And Garsh will take in full advantage of that one as everyone from Scavenge Esports was committed to this. I mean, Ragus wasn't, but I'm not even sure if I'm going to can blame Ragus in this situation. Keel and Frosty both on the ball. Chances that uh, it can actually shut down the field and that mess of players with Scavenge Esports challenging it with two. Infinitesimal. Or just infinitely small. And yet, Garsha still finds himself an opportunity. Could have been better, but man, Scavenge Esports were looking for something in the attack. Instead, they lost everything in defense. Here comes Ragish trying to pull off all oh, what Frosty's been trying to do all day long. He does get that double touch, but no one from his team was fully committed to assisting him with that. And now with 30 seconds remaining, you got to feel Scams Esports have got to put as much pressure as they possibly can. Really start committing all three players as well. It might cause a counter-attack from Backflip Boys, but you've really got to give it everything you've got if you want to make sure you at least have a win today in games, not just in series. 10 seconds now. They might have one more shit chance if they can hard clear this down. They do indeed. Frosty will touch it. He gets it past Garsho. Well defended, but Frosty able to sneak that one through. And it looks like we're going to overtime. Holy moly, just as I was thinking, man, there's no chance. They do that. Frosty jumps in and continues on the challenge. Garsho picking one side to put the ball to. He didn't want, didn't want to put it straight out up front because that would immediately would be a block and challenge from the opposing player he put it put it right where frosty already Ooh. was following it through and scavenge esports do they want to keep that alive oh, frosty do does does a great doing up front oh, but oh. it wasn't enough man second overtime in a row craft man i'm not disappointed so far by the match of the week it has lived up to the expectations as we go to the second overtime in a row this has definitely lived up to the hype of just the, the hype that's kind of been building all day. Every series has got oh. better and better. Keo in the doink zone. Oh, he just flips it around. He rather, rather than letting it bounce off the roof of his car, which might have got a little bit more power on it, but he goes for the soft touch instead, as there was one defender back. But what can I? Just, let's just go back to the end regulation as well. Well played by Frosty, keeping the ball alive and giving his team a chance. But they do find themselves in overtime as Ragus going to take this one around the world pretty much. Pretty much took it from the right-hand side of the field all the way to the left above his goal. And now Frosty. Not a lot of boost. He's just going to have to be able to touch this one. Call in his teammate Ragus is there. Double commitment in defense from backflip boys. And that one's going to fall right in the middle. Oh, double commitment by Frosty and Ragus trying to be the hero. At least Keo is rotated safely back and he'll reset the play here as Scavenge Esports putting so much pressure on here. Here comes Frosty now, shot onto net, it goes under the crossbar and into the top left corner and finally Scavenge have a win on the day. Frosty the saviour, Frosty the the second saver it's, it's it's hard exactly to see what has he done to his team i know what he's done to the team he has scored two most crucial goals ever first to put scavenge sports in the overtime second to finish this all through scavenge sports despite perhaps being not as fast as needed they still beat back for the boys in the attack defense scenario and back for the boys even having all those players on the spot in the position sometimes you see defense nowhere to be found no back for the boys were all there but the scavenge esports outplay them out shoot them frosty playing out of his mind in game number two he is the reason why scavenge esports get one game of the back for the boys and if he performs like that it might be in the hands of scavenge but the tides change so quickly in between the games 
I really can't put on anything. One game, it can only be thrown to a chance. Two games, you have a little bit of rule there. So let's see whether the game number three will, or will be a pivot for his county sports. Can I just mention as well, I think the two games that we've had in this series so far have both been the highest scoring games that we've, or excuse me, the highest shooting games that we've had uh, all day. We've had, we had 22 shots in the last game. We had 19 total there. It just shows you that the uh, the amount of pressure and the amount of uh, aggression that both these teams are willing to play with, and they're uh, trying to play this high high flying offense, um, might not result in a lot of goals. We only saw th uh, five goals in that last game, uh, seven in the game before. But my oh my, they're creating some hell of opportunities for both for each other. And that, like we say, this game of the week has lived up to the hype so far. This is, is we're only in game two, or finished game two, now in game three. Two more wins from either team will secure the win. As well, we could potentially see our first game five of the BSL. What happened there? Keo was nowhere near this. I mean, he didn't even have to be anywhere near this. He just took a shot and an unfortunate block by oh. Garsha. I'm not sure if Ragus played any part in that. But something about, really, they, they took that spot from the flank and make it their own. Shots from there, from Scavenge, almost always turn up as goals now. They have found their golden lucky... Oh my god, oh, Frosty where he doesn't oh. get that power from there. Oh, oh Ragus with a miss. Man, oh, Scavenge Ragus. Esports could have added a second one immediately. Yeah, it could have been Ragus there with the follow-up of that one. Oh, again, another opportunity wasted by Scavenge Esports. Just weak touches. But good defense, nonetheless, by the backflip boys. And they keep it a 1-0 deficit. But Scavenge Esports, they do not like spending a lot of time in their own half of the field. They're happy just to clear this one all the way down. And now Ragus straight back up from Kartu. And Kartu is able to follow up his own touches into the orange half of the pitch. Saria is trying to get it past the defenders. Now will leave it for Garsho actually Keo is going to be the one to send that towards net car to be able to follow this one up still looking for the tying goal with three and a half minutes to go here in game number two or excuse me game number three there's now Frosty no boost has to call in his teammates so will recharge now but it is so back and forth both these teams very evenly weighted Frosty's going to shoot on this open net. Sarius is there to clear it away just at the last moment, but there's so many opportunities being created by Scavenge Esports. Backflip boys are dealing with them very, very well. you got to think, we've seen it before, where their defense just breaks down eventually. Oh, great. Uh, flip reset from Sarius. Not able to make a drop, drop of it, though. Scavenge Esports are putting the ball up front. They're definitely bringing it in front of Backflip boys. But quite often, it seems like they're almost putting, uh, tripping themselves up. So some of those plays, if they only would commi uh, communicate between each other, it would have been yet another goal. But still, the opportunities they're getting already golden. The fact that they are even spending the time in the opposition half, and pretty often they do, frosty. That, that's dangerous, bringing the ball across your goal line, in front of your goal line, especially when back the boys are so quickly pressuring. It's... It's risky play. That time it worked. I don't want to see that again. My heart perhaps won't take it, but Scavenge Esports, at the very least, they're wasting the time on the other side of the field, not allowing Backflip Boys to take sh to shots on their net because every single one of these can be the tying one. And Scavenge Esports want to hold on as long as possible. They do, but they'd rather get that second secure goal before Backflip Boy is able to tie this one up. 45 left and in the middle goes Garsho Sarius not wanting to commit to that thought he had a better angle from the side here kind of does but That's it's straight into the path of Frosty Garsho oh just makes it back in the nick of time to prevent it going 2-0 down what a rotation from Garsho but they've got to think they've got to have a better line of defence than letting Frosty shoot from his own half of the field from his own goal line pretty much and Garshall just panicking in the nick of time and getting back. 
the value of powerful and precise clears cannot be understated. If you find themselves in, in a position where you can just boom it down a field, take that opportunity because more often than not, it's just not just a regular clear when you just send the ball there and then immediately gets in the hands of your uh, opponents. No, this one is a, more of a tactical one. This one might even bring you a goal, speaking of goals. Here comes yet another one. Frosty trying to take shots. He has been just out of his mind in the attack. I believe it was seven shots in the previous game, already five in this one. He might be not at the top of the scoreboard from Scavenge Esports, but he knows that his effort is still there. Yeah, Kiel was trying to play some main games. He got disrupted by the defender. And still only 1 0 in favor of Scamage Esports. 22 seconds left. Sarius flicks one, going to call Garcia in now. Ragus has to make the save. Uh, here comes Cartoon for the follow up. Not able to get the connection there. And that might be all, uh, all she wrote here in game number three. 10 seconds now. Kiel will. Keep this one deep in blue territory. Garcia with one last clear. It will roll up the wall and Sarius will put it in a good position for Cartu, but well defended by Frosty and he puts it down on the ground and Scavenge Esports one game away from a series win here. Man, backflip boys go from backflip to back foot. That's exactly where they currently are, knowing that Scavenge Esports despite all the shade i've been throwing them i'm saying that perhaps baffle boys uh saris and garcia or i do believe it was cardio and garcia actually who are currently really in the lead based on the stats yeah cardio and garcia indeed but saris is in no way a pushover really you take every single player's stats on the backflip boys they're all tremendous they're all up there part of it is by virtue of playing that many games already part of it because they really can do can make the things click and I thought maybe the second game of uh, being hot, so to speak, one had the scavenge esports, but definitely one player has come in hot for scavenge. That is Frosty. And if in game number four, that can be the winner, the clincher for scavenge esports, if Frosty continues in the same way, he'll be my uh, most valuable player of the week because he is currently saving the bacon of scavenge esports. Yeah, five shots for him as well. And. Uh, we mentioned it when they were playing professional ball chasers as well. Uh, Frosty was going for a lot of fancy plays and a lot of flip resets and double touches off the backboard and wasn't able to make them drop. He's starting to realize he, he needs to play a little bit more calmly and he's putting uh, Scavenge Esports into very good positions. Oh, right off the kickoff. He's going to go for the double touch. Oh, just off the crossbar. Wasn't able to make the connection. But good play so far from Frosty. Right off the kickoff, he knows what he needs to do to to cement the pressure that Scavenge Esports have been putting on all game long. If that would have been on target, if that double tap, a second touch after the ball has hit uh, the back wall, would have been in, that would have beaten even Phoenix's mind games with his dribble. That, I mean, right there, straight down the kickoff, that would have been if the best goal of the week definitely of the whole season it definitely would be up there at the very least frosty's intentions are known start from the five minute mark and never stop yeah just, you you've got five minutes on the clock you might as, might as well use every single second of it as frosty he was in the middle there and faked out a couple of defenders and the last man back just able to squeeze that one away not being able to get faked out by Frosty this time around. But well defended once again by both teams as we go back and forth between the two ends of here of DFA Stadium. Ragus now looking to take this one up the wall. He's just collected full boost as well. Very dangerous position for him to be in. Oh, Frosty double committed on that one uh, at the same point as Ragus. And now Keel going to have to run some some time clock time wasting off the clock to allow everyone to rotate back through it does work out in their favor as they're right back on this attack heel looking for the double touch he was going to get it just couldn't squeeze it into the post and it'll bounce away but again scavenge esports every shot that they take is followed up and followed up again and they are playing pretty much half court rocket league right now 
keeping this one deep in blue territory. Relieved for the moment, but it looks like it's going straight back into the backflip boy side of the field. It does look dangerous at times. You see Scam G Sports trying to continue their attack, but they found themselves bunched up in a tight spot when the play slows down, and that gives the backflip boys a perfect opportunity to boom the ball down the field and start something of their own. So they need to beware. Yes, their attacks are very efficient and effective looking as well, but they need to remember that the defense still must be there. There's a very, very fickle balance. Ooh between attack and defense and the attack in this time prevails this time it's a breakdown of back the boys two players up front nobody can challenge this quickly enough another another, another point on board for the theory of counter attacks and powerful players yes indeed and it's frosty once again right on the front line of that attack Popping it in for the one in the lead. They only won the last game by one goal. Is this scoreline going to hold here as well? Or will they get a safety net of two? Frosty's looking very much like he's going to get that. Just off the crossbar. No follow-up just yet. Here comes Keo. Great angle. Not enough power on it, though. He'll have one more attempt. He had plenty of boost. Frosty still with lots of boost as well. I thought he was out. Here comes Ragus, though, to at least try and keep the pressure going. But it's not going to happen as now Cartu able to clear it down. And backflip boys need to start flipping field position now. They need to start getting a lot more shots because they only have two in this entire game. They both came from Garsho and they've been both saved out. So more pressure from backflip boys, more opportunities in the last minute and a half. That's what they need if they want to take this to at least overtime. And Garcia was important for his team in game number one and game number two, really the most valuable player for Backflip Boys in those games. But here, despite shooting the most of his team, it's still not helping. Is this on target? It must oh. be Frosty. Doesn't even give it a final kiss. Kyo gets the credit. And I think even 2-0, I don't think it's just enough. It's the point where Scam G Sports can breathe out with relief. So many times it feels like backflip boys are just an inch away from scoring. Just one beat in the defense, one less defender for Scam G Sports is remaining, and then backflip boys can beat them. But it just didn't click for them just yet. They've been down in their own half all while the Scam G Sports were doing everything to them. The plays that the Scam G Sports have been pulling off, just fantastic fakes, doings all over the field, and of course the passes. The team is following each other. And getting, continuing the place, another shot comes in, a little bit of miss. But Scam and G Sports are feeling pretty happy with themselves. Much, well, at least much better than they did after that the series against Pro Ball Chasers. They came so close to winning so, uh, a couple of those games, but they were just too much in the end for them. They feel kind of robbed. And even the first game here against Batflip Boys, it went to overtime after dominating for so long in that in that uh, second half of game number one. They end up losing over in overtime, but they will not lose this one here. It will be 2-0, and it will be 3-1 in the series in favor of Scam and G-Sports, and they keep their dreams of LAN alive. Man, in a big way. This is a 3-3 result for Scam and G-Sports at the end of this week, and that puts them in a situation where they only need to win their game against post-game strong, which I would say, with the way they have been playing this week, is a pretty... It's a pretty possible affair. For the backflip boys, man, there might be a, a, uh, a couple of questions here and there. Right now, they're on themselves are sitting in a 3-3. Their next matchup, let's actually quickly look that up. Also next week, versus the Mind Games Esports. Actually, uh, been a, uh, we saw them last week, actually. Uh, versus Weite. We know how that series ended up. <laughs> yeah, but man, it has been a big surprise for me. We still haven't seen that game number five, Craftman. It's it's still eluding us one day. Maybe one day, maybe during the final week when the Wii and Professional Ball Chaser are playing. But here, Frosty, I'd still feel like he was crucial for his team. Keon Ragus were still on that point, but some of that place, especially the turnaround in game number two where Frosty brought his team into the overtime and then scored the clincher. That seemingly that's where the tides have turned for Scam G Sports, and from that point on, the control that they got on the game were just growing. 
everything that they uh, put their mind to was working out to them, which in turn gave them the biggest uh, the biggest boost to morale, to everything. And it's a, a snowball effect. More good things led to more good things. And by the end of that, they were just walking all over back with boys. Yeah, definitely. Uh, well, very well played by Scavenge. And I assume uh, you're hint hinting there with Frosty. Is he going to be your MVP of the week, Jam? Oof, that's actually a big question. Uh, I had him on mind. He he wasn't perhaps as, as crucial in this final game as in the previous ones. But I'd say it's either him or I'm really liking what Irie has done to the Ram Range squad. Yeah. The, now, really, the only difference being uh, Ram Ranch, they are currently at the bottom of the standings. Uh, they're uh, even with post game strong right now, ahead by one w a game that they won. But their situation sort of is not as uh, crucial. Here, though, when we're talking about the battle between the teams that are fighting for their exits to the LAN, and knowing for a fact that now in the head to head, Scavenge Esports have beaten back for the boys. The effort that Frost, uh, Frosty has pulled on the field might mean that much more at the end of the season than what Ari has done. Yeah, I'm going to choose Ari as my MVP of the week this week as well. Uh, coming into that Ram Ram squad and making sure uh, that they at least get one series win on the board. It is fantastic. Uh, what he has done um, but congratulations to all our teams this week as well and we thank you very much for uh, joining us here uh, Mining in his craft line that is Jar <laughs>